Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Rocket Money, ZocDoc, and Athletic Greens. Hello, folks, and hey, Bear. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Sitting here with uh, Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, Dusty Slay. Right. Uh, here we are. We're back. Voices. <clears throat> I think it's all right. Feels strong. Feels, yeah. yeah. It's been great up until 10 seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. Then it got <laughs> weird. Uh, <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little rasp in a voice. Mm-hmm. I like that. It's a strong. I think I always have that. Strong radio tone. <clears throat> it's always just a little, you know talk a lot we did nine shows this week so uh it was uh we were everywhere they were all great all super fun nine shows nine shows wednesday through sunday tuesday we did tuesday wednesday thursday or three we went dayton tuesday then springfield wednesday and thursday and then it was two 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 then it was back to dayton and then it was uh Evansville, Evansville, and then uh, Bowling Green. Do you have bad shows anymore? When was the last time you had a really bad show where you were like, "Ugh"? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Probably. I don't know how long you, you don't have to call it. How it's long have you doing comedy? <laughs> have I been doing comedy? Yeah, eight years. It's probably seven years in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't even know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? You, you like, you know. I remember, like, I read watching an interview. Some Lucy K said that where, like, you just don't bomb anymore. Like, it's like, it's, I, uh, you know. I mean, I've had like, uh, whenever we went to Houston, were you with me in Houston? We went to that uh, open mic or something. I did it with Steve Byrne once in Philadelphia. Uh, I was doing the club in Philadelphia, uh, so it was a few years ago. Then we went to a show afterwards like a local show and I've had a couple of those not be great. Uh, but it's more the situation you're in. I don't think it's you. Cause it's just, I've done comedy too long. Like I'm, I just have too much of an act yeah, yeah. that I can like just pull from. Uh, I mean, you have shows that, uh, you know, it's like you could feel the energy might be different in a show, but the stuff that, but overall, no, they're not really, it's it's not gonna be bad. I mean, everybody's so excited to be there now. Right, like, right. Uh, I mean, it would be like I'd have to pop in at Zanes or something, and then it's. But it's usually gonna be. But for one of your shows, it's been a. It's been one a of my shows. It's been. Yeah. I, I couldn't even. That's great. I couldn't even tell you. Like, it'd be hard to do. I think. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be hard to bomb one of your own shows at this point. Yeah, you can. I, I can now. I could do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I could find a way. Well, I can. I can feel. I switched <clears throat> my order around a few shows. This this week I was like kind of switched around the nine shows I was like I opened with different stuff uh, and like was just playing with the order a lot and uh, I definitely felt like parts of my act where I was like I could like how much work I like I realized this week like I have uh, I mean I feel really good with my act but it's like I doing a, a new hour and all that but it's like you can definitely feel where you're like I'm I'm like all right let me get. Like I gotta, I gotta get uh, some stuff's got to get tighter. I think I just found a way to introduce a joke. Uh, I thought of it last night. I haven't done it yet, but I thought of it on the way home. A way to get into uh, this idea that I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. That's been the hardest part. Is it's just a different thing. We were talking about it this weekend. Where I'm at now, it's in. It, it, it's like this. I love. I love comedy. I love it so much. And I love how it changes. It changes. It's so insane, dude. Where you're at, eight years, right? Yeah. And it's wild when you're going to be at 20. Wild. Uh And you're going to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh (laughs) That's what's crazy, dude. It's and it's and it's so great because of that. It's so fun. And we could, I could feel it this weekend because I stumbled into how I was saying something and one night just went like one night was just, I, and it's, they're all going great. I'm saying like the flow of it's my own stuff that I couldn't even really, I, you wouldn't understand like an audience 
it would be like you couldn't explain it because it's not it's just it's more of a feeling really it's like a golf thing where you it's a feel and so it's like i kind of there's a feel that i can feel when i'm like oh i got into that really nice and like and I, it just kind of led it into that way i'm talking about it. it didn't feel clunky and uh clunky to me uh, i don't think it feels clunky to the audience i think it you know i can just you know you're trying to perfect it yeah but it was like you were it was this weekend i was you know you're just like dude i stink like I mean, it's sh- like there's like a sh- there's there'd be a show where you're like I'm the like maybe the worst comic ever, and there's a stand I get a stand ovation, but in your head you're like, dude, I stink, dude, yeah. and because you just know, you know, you just get all, and then there's another show where you're like, oh, all right, now I've got to like being 20 years in, I realized. You know, when I, f- all the jokes are like iced coffee with cream, like people like say that to me a lot or the dead horse, but there's say like stuff like that. And then like my hour now or the like hello world hour is like, I don't have a ton of people like saying a catch a phrase to me, not a catch phrase, but like, you know, something where it's like iced coffee with cream, like say something like that. I don't have a ton of that now where someone says that. But I would think my Hello World special for me is just so different than the Tennessee Kid because the Tennessee Kid was jokes. It's like, it's kind of, it's stories, but it's jokes. And then Hello World is like, it's me. I'm just talking, it's me up there and saying this stuff that's funny. It's like you go from telling funny jokes to just being funny and then everything you talk about. And how to learn how to do that, I mean, I'm still learning. And I mean, if you don't, I mean that's what I would tell young comics. If you don't, if you if you ever feel like you're not learning, then it's it's uh, you're. I think you're in trouble. You should be learning, and should always feel like you never know what you're doing. Well, people know you so well now. You don't have to set up backstories. Yeah, but you don't. But you want to be <clears throat> aware of that. Yeah, and I, like so, it's like you got to be super hyper, like on top of you to not because I can see the easy. I can see an easy path. I can see the path of going, they're here to see me, they're excited. There's some nights, I mean, you can tell they're very excited to be, they're just excited to be here. And we're excited to be in the room and excited to be laughing and having fun. Where it's, you know, it's, you could go, oh, I could, I could probably do a lot and figure out, I could very easily become a worse comic than I am and just kind of ride that. Yeah. Uh, So you got to, you got to be super aware of that. If you're, you know. Where I think I where I want to try to go to, as a comic, I find uh, it's best to believe it's not going to go well. Yeah, I do that too. That's what I like to do. Every time I go out, any time I go, this is going to crush. I feel like I bomb, but if I'm like, this is not going to go well, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like to right before I go up, like just talk to someone that's not on the like a part of our group on the show. Like if it's like a stage person, security guy standing there, I'm like, I don't think I can do this. Yeah, <laughs> and then <it's>, yeah, <laughs> and then and then you just walk out on stage. <laughs> it's yeah. very funny. To, I don't yeah. know if I can do this, man. They did. Uh, I like to do that. I like to go. I'm, hey, I'm about to take off. Yeah, I'm about to get out. <laughs> Let of me here. ask you this: When the opener gets off and you ask him, "How are they?" What do you want to hear? I don't want to hear. I always just say they're great. Yeah, uh, it's a slippery. That's a that's a move the opener's got to figure out. I, like, I don't want the hard truth. I like to hear there's some idiot up front in the towards the right. Yeah, a lot of noise. Uh-huh. I like to hear that. That way I can go in like ready for it. And then if they never say anything, I'm like good, but I'm aware of it. Yeah, I don't. Everybody's pretty good when, like, I, I, mean, I ask every show, how are they? You ask the two openers, how are they? And, uh, you know, like, I'll get bonded. They'll be like, you know, we this weekend, there's like somebody they're like, they're unreal, dude. Yeah. Like, you're going to, they're unreal. And then uh, there's other shows where they're like, you know, they just, they kind of yeah. say that. They go, and they're great. Yeah. And that's the thing. They're looking forward to seeing you. They're you real. Yeah. That. They're yeah. real. I hear tonight. a lot of that. They're yeah. excited to see you. Yeah. And you can feel that. And then you can also feel in a crowd. And I, I'm telling you, whatever show you're at, you, I don't think you could ever know if you're a good or bad crowd. These are all great crowds. It's little kind of things that we do it so much that the energy can just feel like some crowds can, they laugh quicker and then they, uh, you know, they don't laugh long. And some crowds are laughing so long and, you just are kind of like, oh, I, I, I like riffed on this thing because this crowd was just, oh, we got, like, they just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. 
So you those, don't. those crowds are great, but they make you th- sometimes think a joke is better than it is. Oh, yeah. You'll do a long riff because they're laughing, and you're like, wow, I just wrote five minutes. <laughs> and then next show, no one laughs. Oh. Yeah. I'll take something from one town to another town, and then you're like, uh, you're, yeah. And it, I mean, I kind of did it this weekend. I was like riffing about Abraham Lincoln in Springfield, and it was destroying. And, uh, and then I go to, and then I've done it. I, I think I got it. But it's like, dude, it was, I thought I had, I was like, I might have a Abraham Lincoln chunk. <laughs> and then I go to Dayton. And I might it, do a whole special on yeah. presidents. I, was like, <laughs> I, I mean, we're talking about it. I go, my, most of my act is Abraham. That's what I'm going to be known as, Abraham Lincoln guy. And then I go to Dayton, and then by the time I get to Bowling Green, I'm still doing the Lincoln joke, but it's just down to like, <laughs> yes. it's, it's a tiny joke. And you're like, it just got whittled down to like, no one cares. <laughs> it was like, it really worked in that town. I like to we, I, but the negativity comedy is about. Weirdly, it's like you kind of you don't go. I'm gonna kill it out there. You go like eh, this, is, this might not be good. Yeah, you need to be beat down a little bit to keep yeah. it keep it funny. I think I, we have a fun. I mean, I I, I, I think I've said it. Uh, I don't know if I said it on here. We always say before we go on stage. I tell everybody. Like we're trying to start a thing before we go on stage. Look, I look at everybody and go. Always remember, everybody. I can do this without any of you. <laughs> And then I walk away. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and it's very, yeah. but it's very fun and true. No, it's. Yeah, I don't I mean. I, I don't know. even mean it. Even sort of true. I know. I just. It's a. Look, it's a very mean thing to say, but it's a very like comedian thing to say to each other. Of course. Where you just like I always remember. Uh, all I need is Ricky the bus driver. I can do <laughs> without any of you. And then you just and you walk away. I would be fine if they say it to me. They've said it to me. Yeah. It's very. It's just stupid and funny. And you just start like it's it makes it not as much, you know, serious or pressure. Yeah, or, like yeah. let's have fun. Like let's go do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, sometimes it can get so serious with certain people to where it's like, let's lighten up. This yeah. is jokes. Yeah, I walk you feel st- you can feel stupid. I walk like I like walking around. Like before a show, I want just the crew whoever's with the tour like that's all i really want around you don't want anybody that's like outside because you want to have normal conversation so like if we were talking about if i'm about to go on stage and you're like i want to a be able to walk away from you at any point because every comic and every comic feels that where you're like we're talking like i want to be like i could they could i could walk away and your feelings are not going to get hurt or i have to go like i'm sorry i'm walking like everybody just understands like when we're out there working at any point anybody even you know chase the assistant or Eric, the barber, like they, everybody could have to go do something yeah. and then they just got to take off running. And so you need the vibe needs to be, everybody's like, okay with that. We don't have to be like, I'm sorry, I got to go run, you know. That's why I never like family members backstage because it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know, like, you know, you don't want to, like when I was taping my special, like my sister came and I don't want, you know, I don't want to be like having to, like give a tour of this is what's going on back here. Yeah. I'm like, I, I just need to be able to focus on I'm about to do comedy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a lot. It's a, when you yeah. have to like be like, Hey, what are you doing? What, what's going on? All right. right. Like it's, uh, you have to be outward and you kind of want to be inward Yeah, because you're about to go talk inward. And so, yeah, when you, you want to just hang out with the crew, that's like, I think that's a great point though. Just people that you can walk away from at any time and they know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. They're not like, well, what's going on? Why, why are you yeah. disappearing like that? They know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. They know that you're just, you're thinking about your act and you're, yeah. and you're just kind of go like, I'm not listening. And you need to go and you need to like brutal, like you can get funny. Like someone says something to you and you go, I'm not listening to you at all. <laughs> and then you walk away yeah. and like, they just laugh and they go, and, and then yeah. they say that to you later. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like, you just need that kind of. <clears throat> yeah. You don't need people that are like, why are you standing out in the hallway by yourself out here? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, you know why I'm out here. Yeah. Right? What are you doing out here? You're like, well, you know, yeah, I needed to walk away. Yeah. I need to walk like, cause I, you'll be standing there. Then you're like, I want to go walk away. I like to pace, uh, before the show, I'll kind of pace back, uh, backstage behind yeah. the curtain. Where I can hear the crowd and you can do that and just kind of walk back and forth. I like to walk in the hallway. I like to walk in my dressing room for a second. Then I come back and you're just like floating around. Like, and you just kind of want to be like, uh, you know. Yeah, especially if you're everywhere. taping something. There, sometimes there'll be uh, some last minute jokes that I'm like, I just want to make sure I got this wording down. So I like to say it to myself out loud a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. 
In Bowling Green, uh, last night, if you were at the late show, uh, the it was the, the the crowd was great. But you, you you wouldn't know this, but so there there was above the stage, they had a big thing of balloons that they were supposed to do for they were going to drop them for like a show there the night before or <laughs> we got there and it didn't work. So then I didn't know they were going. I saw the balloons earlier. The crowd couldn't see the balloons. They're up in the thing. So I saw the balloons earlier. And then I, didn't, I was like, what is that? And then I, I thought, oh, I guess that's just something that they do for, you know, some other show. And then I'm about to go up to this for the second show. And then Travis was like, just so you know, something might happen. At the, and then and I'm kind of like, is it the balloon? Like, I, and he's like, Ugh. like he was trying to make it like not tell me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I mean, everybody saw the balloons. Yeah. Like, and then so I'm like, all right. And I think, all right, they're going to drop these balloons when I get done. Uh, and so right before I go out, then Travis is like, Hey, the balloons is not happening. Well, I'm thinking he's, so now I'm thinking like, well, he's just trying to get me to act, like, forget about it. Yeah. I know they're dropping balloons. Yeah. So I do my act and when I get done, I'm like, let me just stand here a little longer <laughs> and let them drop these balloons. <laughs> and so I, I'm like, all right, I'm like, good night, everybody. I'm just waving. And I mean, I'm just, I'm like, well, I don't hear anything, but they're balloons. Yeah. I don't know if I would hear anything. Yeah, yeah. And so I have to just kind of like glance over my shoulder. I was like, they haven't fell yet. And I stand out there a little longer. I mean, in my head, I'm like, these. I'm like going to be, my hands are open. I'm just like surrounded, just surrounded by balloons going, you're welcome, Bowling Green. <laughs> yeah, like I'm yeah. thinking these balloons are dropping. Travis was for real saying they couldn't drop the balloons. Yeah. And then I kind of walk back and I'm like, I mean, the whole time until I get off the curtain, I'm like, I guess these balloons are going to just fall and I'm now going to be off the stage. And then that's when I got it. He goes, no, no, I was serious. They're not going to go. But in my head, I was like, here we go. <laughs> here comes the balloon. Like so these just, balloons are just up there now. They're never going to get them down, huh? They So the, they said they had, there's a safety thing they have to cut to for make them do it. And they didn't even do it for the, for the people that had the balloons to be dropped. They forgot to cut the safety thing. So then they were like, we couldn't dropped the balloons so, so they had them and they're like they're up there they're like oh well yeah we're doing them for nate show because it's like there's no point for them being up there and then they forgot to do the, the cut wow. thing again and so they still those balloons the safety cut guy needs to maybe yeah. get a new job yeah well someone's going to get those balloons if you go to that bowling and theater just someone's going to get the balloons and they're not supposed to have <laughs> balloons but you're going to see balloons fall on some act and be like Oh, wow. <laughs> Hopefully one that doesn't really go that well. And yeah. then the balloons fall <laughs> the balloons to where people come. are like, that seems unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would have been very funny for balloons to fall. And, you know, just, good night, everybody. And Wish the out. audience a happy birthday. Yeah. And you're just <laughs> like, all go. Uh, it would have been very funny. Well, for safety, if you want to make some cuts, I would recommend Rocket Money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What? Think that's I mean, bad? that borderline that's makes me think you don't know what rocket money is at all. Uh, so when you cut uh, stuff that you subscribe for? Yeah. Yeah. Cut costs. Cut yeah. costs. Well, isn't that what I said? You said for yeah. safety. For safety. Well, I was, uh, if your bank account's getting low. That's what I meant. Mm. Okay. For safety. Are rising prices or your co-host stressing you out? If you're looking for ways to cut, sorry. If you're looking <laughs> for ways to cut costs, you need rocket money. You could be wasting money and not even realizing it. I've told you a million times. I'm subscribed to a hundred different things. I got to get a hold of this. I got to get on a rocket money, which I've done. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels you your unwanted. You got to get a hold of it. done it. <laughs> I'm saying I need to, and I have already done it. <laughs> Okay. I have needed to in the past, but not anymore because I'm on rocket money. It cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have those subscriptions they've forgotten about. Chances are you're one of them, like that Stars app just to watch one show, really taking a shot at stars, <laughs> or that free gaming trial you've never actually used. Rocket money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses. So you can track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. I get this quite a bit. I get a little notification. There's a large, you know, a lot of money. Just what happened? Just making sure everything's okay. That's nice to have. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash Nate. That's rocketmoney.com slash Nate. One more time for the people in the back, rocketmoney.com 
slash Nate. Is Drop like, the balloons. Is it a uh, Panera Bread uh, notification? Hey, something. You all right in there? You go, yeah, yeah. It's Spent $120 yeah. on lunch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Panera Bread? <laughs> You're like, nah, that's real. That's yeah. real. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate let me you, show a real. couple of this. So good. we met the, the Cordell family. They give us a uh, very <clears throat> nice, met their whole family. Uh, I already, we knew the Cordells and their extended family. And uh, they give us these, these are the, this is your, they get you, get you a hat. I mean, you don't have it on, but I'm yeah. wearing it. Yeah. It's the, uh, what do we say? The, the Lucky Horseshoes. The Lucky Horseshoes. That's what they are? That's the team name, but yeah. a lot of these teams will do. Uh, but it's yeah, the know, lucky alternate Orchard. jerseys and stuff. And so this is that sandwich, the open face sandwich. Yeah. So this is Springfield's about. minor league baseball team. Yeah, this is the horseshoe so sandwich. Yeah. yeah, okay, lucky horseshoes. Thank you, that. And then if you see it in the back, this Nate Lane Entertainment, uh, which is pretty cool. Hold on. I got, and then they also made this, which is very cool. It's a van. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Made out of baseball Nate bats. Entertainment and uh, Jeff Holt. It's B J D bat and flag. Uh, I got another bat too. Uh, so a couple things that they were very cool and show you. And then uh, one little class. Uh, Tom Papa, my friend, our friend Tom Papa, has got a book. He's got a book out. Uh, Tom's great. I know a lot of people that would listen that are fans of me are fans of Tom for the exact same reason. Tom Pop is great. And Tom Pop is an amazing comedy. He's got a new book out. We're all in this together. Uh, so make sure you go buy this. Check this out. Uh, more expensive in Canada. Why is it more expensive in Canada again? I think their money's worth Their money's less. different. Yeah, their money's different. They have different currency. Yeah. Well, go buy it. Whether, where are <laughs> you loonies and toonies to get that thing. We're all in this together. Make Tom Papa room. is great, though. I, I worked with him uh, one time doing a corporate event. I've done his Netflix podcast or whatever a couple of times, but uh, I did a corporate event with him. Very funny. Yeah. I had not worked with him <clears throat> up until that point. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Him and uh, Fortune. Fortune's in a big movie. And then uh, with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. yeah. Is that uh, a movie? It's a show, right? It's a movie on that. Oh, oh, I, yeah, thought, I, it was thought, I thought it was okay. a show. And yeah. then it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. And then uh, got a good thing going with comics. Yeah. The machine. Yeah. yeah. I went and watched the machine. Machine is obviously, you know, a lot dirty, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it's a it's a good thing. You know, like Bert did really great, and it's a very fun movie, and it's uh, it's I I, I you know I'm I'm a big Bert fan. I, that guy gives it his all and he does everything for the fans and uh and it, I, I do believe it's a great thing for comedy uh, i've heard great things about that movie i've not gone to see yeah, it but i heard super fun things. and it's uh it's 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 a good thing for comedy like for comedians to have a guy be making a movie like that i mean i think it just shines a light on us to be like we're you know looked at as like hey you know these guys have an audience and they you know, can get some chances. So I think it's a, a Sebastian. He's got a movie. Sebastian's too. got a movie out now yeah. too. Robert De Niro. Yeah. Uh, and Nick, our boy Nick Novicki, is in Spider Verse. He's oh, the okay. Lego. He's yeah. the Lego Spider Man. He's the wow. voice of Lego Spider Man. Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. yeah. I think we're gonna go see it today. Uh, so make sure you check that out too. I mean, that's it's crazy. That's dude. awesome. That's big yeah. time, dude. Getting famous, dude. Nick's gonna get too big. <laughs> uh, do y'all have any? You know? I was in uh, Salt Lake City at uh, Wise Guys Comedy Club, and uh, last night I was in Louisville at the Louisville Comedy Club. Had a little incident at the airport <clears throat> that oh, you might want to hear about. Oh, yeah. You flew to Louisville? Well, now this is... <laughs> <laughs> I had a layover. Yeah. <laughs> Bowling Green. Caught this. Yeah. It's like a show. Um, no, in Salt Lake City. Okay. So on the way home, my flight was at 526 a.m. Yeah. Beautiful. Very, very early flight. The day before check in, check in for your flight. I was in United. Said, uh, "You have any bags? Check." I didn't. I just had a carry on. Said, "You can't check in online if you don't have bags," which I thought was very weird. Never heard that. So uh, I thought, well, maybe it's just they don't want you sneaking. You know, per- taking your bag that should be checked down to the gate and and then pre- oh, I didn't know this was too big. And then they check it and you get it for free. So maybe so I get there at the airport. I'm mad already for you. <laughs> and uh, first I try to check in the key. I still won't let you. Got to go up, stand in line, get up to the thing. And this is like 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. 
And I finally get up there, and the woman, she's trying to figure out why it won't let me check in. And she said, did you buy this um, through a third-party vendor? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe Priceline. And she's like, yeah. She's like, you know all that stuff you're supposed to read that nobody reads and you just agree to? She said, you didn't pay for overhead space. This is a discounted ticket. You have to pay for overhead space. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So she said, you're going to have to check this bag. It's $35. All right, fine. I mean, so I check it. And then she said, oh, wait a second. She said, at 45 minutes or less, or or less than 45 minutes before you can't check a bag, it's too late. United just we won't let us do it. I was like, it is. And it was 4.42 a.m., so it was 44 minutes before my flight. She said, you can't check this bag. Okay, fine. I'll just carry it on. She said, you can't carry it on. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? She said, you're going to have to take a later flight. That's crazy. Wow. So I had to take a later flight home. Oh, wow. Because of this weird thing in the system where they wouldn't let me check my bag or carry it on. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> well, how later was the flight? I got home two hours later. Oh, that's insane. That yeah. is insane. <laughs> was it a better flight at all? Or I mean, it was about, any... it took me about an hour later departing. So, I mean, I'm yeah. there at 4.30 in the morning yeah. just waiting now. And then it was an hour longer layover in Denver. Uh, that's why around. i don't like those third party things yeah i don't do them either. i don't like to do it yeah yeah third party i look at third party i look at kayak to get a lay of the land of what's happening mm. what the flight options are kind of the prices and then you just from there you go to even hotels you go straight to the app because uh, it's that that's in yeah that's insane what do you i mean it should be so obvious Paying for the overhead space, I've never heard of. What, for United? Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't think, I thought you're allowed to, it's, it's their. Yeah, it's probably how the third party gets you that's a cheaper right. ticket. I think that's, they trick you into say, hey, we got you this cheaper ticket, but then in the fine print, it's like, well, you got to check it back. Yeah, hopefully you're not bringing same, anything. It's the same price. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how they get you. Yeah. That, can you still bid on a price line? I don't know. I've you never remember seen that? that? No. You used to be able to bid on uh, hotels, and like if you stayed at a hotel, you could be like, "All right, what do you want to bid?" You'd be like, "I'll do maybe it's hotels dot com or something. I don't know. It was something, and you could like be like, "I'll, I'll, I'll give line? you the Priceline Negotiator." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those commercials. Oh yeah, William Shatner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they still do, and you could it, you would like be like, "All right, I'll pay." Because sometimes you would go. I remember, man, I did all this. Like you would go. Uh, you just put in like, you know, begin find a nice hotel and just be like, it's four hundred dollars a night, and you're like, I'll give you a hundred and fifty dollars a night. And a lot of times they're like, no. But then occasionally you'd go something crazy, then you just would know like, all right, you could usually go like fifty bucks off and be like, what if I did, you know, fifty bucks a night if it's a hundred bucks a night, and if you do it close enough, then they're like, all right. I used to I mean Priceline was awesome at the beginning, but I think now it's like. Again, they're all just – everything's good at the beginning, and now they do stuff like this. Oh, yeah. Where you want to go like, well, who's flying and just walking on the plane? I do remember doing that once. You taped a special in New York. Maybe it was um, – your Comedy Central special mm -hmm. was at New York. Yeah. And I thought, maybe I'll go up there and just – and I'd never done that before the bidding. I like – and I really couldn't do it. I couldn't get off work, but I like – I just want to play around with this. Mm -hmm. I put in a really low number, but there is no – they don't ask you a second time. Yeah. And it said accepted, and I bought a ticket. <laughs> like, I didn't have it. I was like, oh, I was just playing around. <laughs> yeah. I bought like a $75 playing ticket to New York or something like that. Yeah. And just I had to eat it. Did you, yeah. you didn't just go? Nah, I couldn't get off work. Oh. I was just really just, I don't know. I was just daydreaming. Like, eh. Yeah. Did yeah. you get into it with a woman at the airport? Did you ever get confrontational with an employee like that? Nah. You didn't? Okay. When you use the third party I, thing, I'm and then you it. know you've not read the, the, fine print there's like it's no way to get confrontational it's like because i'd like because that's what i thought too i'd love to yell at that lady i mean the uh, only thing i was question she says united <laughs> won't let me because like <laughs> like southwest it'll if it's less than 45 minutes it'll give you a warning like yeah, hey yeah. your bag may not make it well yeah. that would make me mad too because you should be able to go through with the bag and then check it when you get to the counter yeah because other people can. yeah i think there's trying to stop that too now are they they just chart they just did something that because it was like, I think people just figured out you could, uh, you're like, all right, all you got to do is get the bag through security, and then they're going to check it for free at the gate. Yeah. And I think they're putting a stop to that. Okay. I mean, what are they charging, dude? What are you charging as an airline? Just, I said, just make the price more expensive and have all the stuff. 
And every, no one, I don't think anybody would say a thing. Yeah, they it, should all give you one free check bag. That's yeah, what I think. and then just raise the price of the ticket and yeah. just get in like and just put it in and roll it in instead of like you, when you feel like you're getting nickel and dimed and taken advantage of. That's where it gets like frustrating, mm-hmm. and it's just insane, dude. It's insane. Sometimes you go out to uh, if you're in that situation, go out to the uh, bag guys that check your bag out on the thing. Those guys can sometimes get stuff through, mm. and you, I mean, just go throw them twenty bucks, yeah, or you know, and be like, "Hey, could you get this bag?" You know, and then just throw it on there. Just they can, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I said you sometimes you can do that. Mm-hmm. Like those guys are a little bit, you know. Yeah, the American Airlines guy, uh, Bode at uh, the Nashville airport, he hooks it up. <laughs> He's the guy, Bode. Bode, yeah. He's the guy. Mm. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> Well, I'm not saying he does anything spot. free, but uh, okay. I mean he'll help you out. He hooks you up yeah. in that way. Just saying he's a little corrupt. I'm yeah. not saying he's no. He, he goes no. above and beyond to take oh, care of you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You said you sometimes you got to like if you get yourself in a sticky situation, it's twenty bucks goes a long way. But you got to go outside. You get you can't go. You got to go outside to the guys outside. And on top of it, those guys they don't let inside. Yeah, you need those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, those yeah, guys yeah. got to. Those guys got to work around. Yeah, they go. They go. He goes. You guys go inside. They go. We ain't never seen inside. <laughs> you, do you work for United? They're like barely. Yeah. <laughs> do you want this bag to get there? Not get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's very. She, on top of it, she's like, I can't guarantee your seat anymore because you're, you know, you're on this new flight. She's like, you got to go down the gate and they'll assign you your seat. Now, thankfully, that all worked out. But I have to go to the gate, wait for that person, you know, and she has to check me in there, and then. <laughs> Get back to Nashville finally. I have to wait for my little bitty carry on bag <laughs> in the carousel, which took forever. You couldn't yeah. even carry that on the the second time. Well, it was the new flight. Uh, no. So you still had to pay thirty five dollars. Yeah, that's insane. Wow, dude. that's insane. Yeah. So uh, you're like, what? What if I buy the overhead space right now? Yeah, I guess because I went through third. I don't know. How much cheaper would did it even back out? I don't know. You I, honestly, I would tell people, just someone that travels, and I like love looking at this stuff. I would try to, if you can, just try to book it through the main yeah. website. I don't think the prices are that crazy, and I remember them not being. Uh, I mean, I I went and did this for a very long time. I booked my own flights. I probably now I. Uh, now, because we're touring, I, 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 I've, I've helped booking this stuff. But from experience, I, I think I'm very <coughs> good at booking. Because, I mean, I, I booked up until, I mean, maybe four years ago, I was booking, I booked my own stuff. Uh, and I would always do, um, uh, always do, uh, like, do the, do it through the regular website. Mm. And I always yeah. tell people, too, look at first class sometimes. Just yeah. glance at it sometimes. Sometimes. There is, I remember one time from Seattle to Los Angeles, a first class ticket, if I had a bag, it was it was like forty dollars more for first class. So you get the bag free and you got a little lunch. So like it's there's just it does not yeah. always work out. Yeah. And, but sometimes and, you can look and yeah. just go just and and just weigh the really like what is it really going to be? If you have a long flight, maybe it can be worth it. If you don't, maybe it's it's saying it's not worth it. It's like, you know, I know if you're flying. I'm talking about really like if you're flying alone. Like I, I know when you have your family, it's like a, it's a much different thing. I, I thought when, you were saying just keep keep an eye on it just for like aspirational purposes. Like just in case just you ever make it. <laughs> just in case you ever no. succeed. Just circle it. Underline it. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm serious. Like it used to like I would always check it and be I would do that rental cars. Rental cars, there was a I could always find I would see guy comics would rent rental cars and they'd have the worst car and I could find I, there was a one called Sixt, S I X T. Mm-hmm. And I remember when they came, they were in Europe and then they came over. And I mean, dude, they, I could get uh, you could rent a Mercedes cheaper than you could rent a uh, Camry from Hertz. And it was just like a better, ex- like you can just, there's other things you can look at. If you really just go look, you can find stuff. But I tried to go, I don't try, now the third party stuff used to work. And I think now it's just too big of a thing that I don't think it works. I think the companies got got tired yeah. of it. Yeah. Because they, everybody else was getting all these discounts and it was hurting them. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I like I book all my own stuff, and it's like when you use the apps, then you build up the points, and I get upgraded all the time, and it's like I'm a real pro with it. Like I see flights get canceled, and people line up for miles at the mm-hmm. desk, and I just go on the app, change my flight, yeah, uh, you know, and I'm like, yeah, what are you guys doing? Yeah, what I are mean, you I was doing. Thinking, I can book a flight in under a minute. Yeah, like I, I, I mean, f- yeah, 45 seconds. I can, I can. It's just whatever, <laughs> however slow the internet might be, but. I can go like Delta app and just beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Got it. We're good. Like, you know, and I mean, I can even, I could even look at some prices. So I'm not saying like, I'm just blind, like, you know, just being like price doesn't matter. I can glance at, I can look and get a little bit lay of the land. It's just a matter of how much you fly. If you fly a lot, then it's different. You don't really care as much. I mean, if you fly a lot, you care a lot. I'm saying if you don't fly a lot, you don't care as much, and so you're willing to like maybe deal with the situation a little bit more because you're like we do this twice a year, or once a right. year. Uh, and if you fly a lot, you're just like this is your life is like trying to get you know yeah the the right upgrades. It's fun. It's I enjoy a great it. time. So um, it was brought to my attention an article questioning is Nate Bargatze sick? Yeah. Oh. Um, one of our folks, Josiah Biles, sent this to me. And he said, you read this, and um, he's like, I'll I'll tell you what part, after we go through it, that finally made him think, this may not be, this may be done by AI. Yeah. So uh, it's all pretty funny, but uh, I guess line two there, fans immediately began to speculate something was wrong after his weight loss. Yeah, there have been rumors swirling around the internet that Bargetsy is battling an illness. Nothing <laughs> says sick like looking better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he, he canceled a show in Nashville August 2020. I missed that. Did you cancel Did a show in Nashville in 2020? No, none of this no. is accurate. No. Um, in addition to a stand up career, Bargetsy has a successful acting career. Thank you. He has <laughs> appeared you. in several television shows, including stand ups, Orange is the New Black. <laughs> I was great in that. Were you in Orange is the Yeah. That was a big part of it. <laughs> I played a lesbian. It's one of the inmates. Is that a... <laughs> That's what the show is. Yeah. Is that what the show is? I don't know. It's a female yeah. prison. While yeah. he has not gone this into when specifics. I was, uh, when I was fatter <laughs> and I really looked the role, my yeah. hair was longer and they go, yeah. borderline, basically. Yeah. yeah. It appears he is on the mend and continuing to make progress. Fans can take comfort in knowing he's still performing and taking care of himself. I'm still not convinced, though. That you're not sick. I got to tell you, this is the yeah. dream to, to lose so much weight. People think you're ill. It goes on to talk about how you, they've got their own ways of how you've lost weight. Um, <clears throat> then it gets into your, I mean, it talks about how you. Yeah, that's your whole workout routine here. He began by taking walks around his neighborhood, gradually yeah. increasing the intensity and duration of the workouts. He then moved on to resistance training. I, mean, I don't know how accurate this is. Yeah, well, then it's funny. It goes to he's sick to like then like well he just worked out. <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. And then it gets if you keep going, yeah, it sick gets, workout routine. Yeah, th- I love this. Is Nate Bargatze a Christian? <clears throat> Says you often quote Bible verses and other spiritual messages on your Instagram and Twitter accounts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're a member of the First Baptist Church Madison, where you're a regular attendee and volunteer at the church and <laughs> serve in the children's ministry. <laughs> I have a, I have all the time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is great. You recently co-wrote a book with Pastor Louis Giglio, yeah, titled "Marriage in Light of Eternity." Yeah, you and you and me forever, <laughs> marriage in light of eternity. Yeah, I wrote it for Laura. You didn't tell us about that. Man. Well, I didn't. You know, I don't. Y'all don't need to know everything. The I book did. is based on a series of sermons that you and Giglio did. <laughs> we give it the church together. We go up and do a yeah two man type thing. Yeah, and it's tough. You know, I had to bring him along. I think he. He tries steps on my toes yeah, a lot. I didn't back. care for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about leaving, uh, going to a different church. Gets in your family. Derek's got some weird kids. Um, yeah, when I'm Derek with is also a successful actor. He is and yeah. comedian. Trevor was born in 1974. <laughs> uh, oh, that's your brother. Your Nate, brother two Trevor. Two years younger yeah. than Nate. Oh, but it says my na- my Nate Bargetti's brother's name is Derek Bargetti. Derek Bargetti is also a successful actor and comedian. Trevor was born in 1974, <laughs> making him two years younger than Nate. While Nate was growing up in Tennessee, Derek was growing up in Wisconsin. So just out of nowhere, <laughs> yeah, 
They just change his name to Trevor in the middle. Yeah, and then it goes back to Derek and then back to Trevor. Yeah. Trevor's success in entertainment industry has been a source of pride. This is all I mean, Bargatze yeah, family. he's done so good. Derek has made numerous appearances on his brother Nate's podcast, The Bargetsy Family Hour. Well, <laughs> we've been, that's been a ongoing. That's yeah. actually what got this started. Yeah. <laughs> I like that name. Let's switch to that name. I got Ben and Luke from Other Brothers. Luke's an <laughs> IT manager. Uh, and Ben's a musician. Yeah. And then the last part there, your height. I'll tell you what it says oh. about Trevor may not be as well known as his brother Nate. Trevor is doing so much better. Yeah. Like he's in uh, a ton of shows. He's in Modern he's Family, Modern v. Family, v. v Glee, Glee, CSI, Grey's Anatomy, and featured in the movie The Campaign and accidentally on purpose. Like how am I? And it's like <laughs> Trevor needs Trevor's to get well. it together. Because yeah, how am I more known? Five eight. I'm five eleven. Like to he's a tall comedian, which is one of the reasons why he's such a hit on stage. He also has an athletic build, <laughs> which you. gives him a commanding performance mm -hmm. when performing. So that's what Josiah Presence. said tipped him yeah. off when he said you were five foot eight and had an athletic build. He's like, <laughs> yeah. wait a second. That's the first time. Yeah, that's yeah. The, I don't know if this is accurate. Uh yeah. So it's very oh, funny. This is fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know what the point of this is. Uh I don't either. Abigail's successful business warmer and uh, entrepreneur. Bethany has been in the business world <laughs> since she was a teenager. You have a lot of sisters and brothers. Yeah. Right? But they just change their names back and forth. This yeah. is all just throwing keywords yeah, out yeah. there so people click on it. Mm. Yeah. But what are they clicking on this for? What does this do? Like, what I, I, I'm not saying with me, like, right. when they do this with anybody, what is like the, this website? What's the, the point of this website? Like, there's an author there uh, at the very top. Yeah. It's such a weird name. I feel like that's just. Uh, yeah. Rahala makes Sahu. If they get yeah. clicks, then they can sell ads. Is that? Yeah, all of these. What do you think? So these things all throughout the article, these are all based on impressions, how they get paid. So you think that's why they do it? Just yeah, come up that's, some all, that's all this. Clickbait. Is. So that's it's all like this is. yeah. So it's like just having a crazy title, and it makes you click it, and then once you click it, they get the ads have to pay. Yeah, and yeah. It, and the ads are going nowhere. I mean, yeah. the ads are. Sketchy ads. Well, this is some third party. Usually how this works is there's third party companies that will populate these with clickbait links. Mm -hmm. You can click them and then, yeah, you get a little money. For I them. am interested in the illness filter TikTok, how to get the illness fi filters on TikTok. I'd like an illness filter. We'll dig yeah. into that next episode. <laughs> yeah. We'll get into it. If uh, <laughs> we did, Eric posted something a reel on his, uh, my, my, like, I'm, I will sh like we're working on losing weight again, mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh, it's pretty crazy. I was much bigger than I thought I was. I saw another picture this weekend. You mean before, like Ryan's in the wedding. past? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was. There's another picture that's like it's insane, dude. How much? What big. was the most you weighed? Do you remember? Uh, I like that reel right there. Yeah, that was from your uh, yeah. That first picture is from your Origin of the New Black. Yeah, that is my Origin of the New Black. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's just a little a little taste. Even your of, head looks bigger in that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I I mean I thought I, I in my head I was like I've never weighed more than one ninety five. Mm -hmm. I've never weighed two hundred. And there's a picture we found. I might have weighed. 215 mm. like i mean there's a yeah. picture of my buddy ryan's wedding and i look enormous and you're like dude i was much bigger than i thought i was uh it's yeah and it's wild and we're trying to go we're, we're gonna when i when i can get to it we're we're have a big i'll post uh we're actually show because it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I got up to about 220 one time. Yeah. And it's like, I looked sick then. But when I lost weight, nobody was like, are you sick? They were mm. like, good for you, bud. <laughs> yeah. Even if you are sick, yeah. it's doing wonders yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your sickness is admirable. We did this. Uh, so we posted the Seinfeld. Uh, mm. So we went to the sitcom Suites 2. Yeah, I believe it's, in, uh, it's like in Cincinnati. And uh, it's the thing I airdropped you. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I've showed this already. Uh, we won't show this whole thing because it's doing. This is the, this is the apartments. You can you can. They have uh, a Seinfeld apartment, uh, Friends apartment, uh, Golden Girls, and a Shit's Creek 
apartment. It's Airbnb, right? Airbnb. And so look at this. When you walk in, Keith Hernandez, uh, I mean, it's so crazy, dude. It's, mm. The Seinfeld one is, for me, was insane. And, like, they just have, look at this apartment. And, like, you could stay in it. Uh, you got all the cereal boxes they there. They just in have the Seinfeld playing. Oh. Well, that's interesting. I never thought about what the other side of the apartment looked like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But look, yeah. the human fun, it's the specific kind of uh, ways that they do it. Uh, Astonishing Tales of the Sea <laughs> book. This is the movie, Rochelle Rochelle, Sack Lunch. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it had like the credits. It had reviews from like funny stuff. Then you had that door and then Kramer's behind it. They have the cereal box. Uh, oh. It's just. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, like the buzzer, you can buzz it. And uh, I mean, just such a cool kind of thing. And then uh, you can fast forward a little bit, uh, go a little bit. So, yeah, uh, nothing finer than being your diner autograph, <coughs> all that stuff. Keep going. And then uh, keep going around. The, the keep, bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom's a lobster. And this was uh, the bedroom. I was just supposed to be like Kenny Rogers. Kenny, yeah. Roasters. Yeah. Ah. So like show the show the other one I airdropped you. We shot because we shot some like we did some Kramer interests interests, and uh, this is with Graham. Can you uh, you can play play the volume? Yeah, just start it back at the beginning. Uh, yeah, one second. Yeah, and then uh, so this is uh, me and Graham, uh, and then we shot this. So you can. Mr. Marbles. <laughs> Kenny? Kenny? <laughs> yeah, if you're listening, yeah. they're reenacting the Kenny Rogers Roasters yeah. episode. Yeah. yeah. We're we're gonna post that one too. Uh it was yeah, we were very we got another one of my dad that's very funny. Uh and uh it's it's the whole thing is it, it was crazy. I mean, such a cool. That's such a cool idea. What's it yeah. cost to stay there? Uh, I don't know. Does it cost As just I to go all this. walk in and? No, see no, it? we had it rented. I don't like. Oh. I, I didn't. Travis booked it. Oh, so I don't know what it costs. Like, uh, yeah. but it, I don't think it's insane. Yeah. Like, it's it, you're just in a Airbnb. It's not this crazy kind of thing. It's, mm-hmm. I don't think it's that. You know, yeah. whatever the cost is, I don't know. Uh, That's really cool. But it's uh, it's it was like outside Cincinnati. We we booked it to stay there, and then we realized we were too when we were in uh, uh, Dayton, I guess, or somewhere. I forget. Uh, maybe it was Dayton. We 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 thought it was closer, and we were a little bit farther away from it, so mm-hmm. we didn't really get to go there. And so we just on after the Dayton show, we just drove to it and then got out. And we thought, all right, let's just go look at it real fast, mm-hmm. you know. And then we we don't really have time to stay. And then we went in, and we were there for two hours. Oh, yeah. Just like, you know, just looking at – we were really I in the Seinfeld room. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, it, they're on Instagram. Sit, I mean, yeah, sitcom suites. We tagged them. Uh, very cool. All right. Uh, should I read some comments? We've been, Let's do it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Alan Cup, when Ted Nugent was playing Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, claims they received noise complaints – from farmers 18 miles away. Secondly, I live in Cincinnati, where in 1979 we had 11 people trampled to death at a Who concert. It was a general admission seating, and when they opened the doors to let people in, there was a rush of folks to get in to get get good seats. For a long time after, they did not allow any general admission seating at concerts. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, it sounds awful. That sounds like boarding a Southwest flight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) You see uh, Hideki uh, uh, Hamasui. I can't remember his last Matsui? name. Matsui? Matsui. Hideki Matsui. Uh, in golf this weekend, he finished like tied 17. Then they, there's a picture of him standing in spirit line. Really? For a spirit flight. Wow. I mean, like he probably won a f- – I mean, he, he had won a few hundred grand. Uh-huh. And he just flying – he just on – I mean, he just went straight to the airport and is flying spirit. Yeah. Man of the people, dude. That's a – you're a man of the uh, – uh, more than just people. If you're, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of good regular blue collar people that ain't flying. That's true. Maybe, spirits, uh, maybe he's just unfamiliar with boarding. He didn't know what to yeah. do. You know, yeah. he's trying not not good at booking flights. <laughs> yeah. 
Santosh Nanan. Santosh Nanan from Skatuan, Saskatchewan. Graham, are you still here? Saskatchewan. No, I, I think I kind of know Saskatoon. 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 Santosh Nanan from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. <laughs> Saskatchewan. That's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Uh, my head about exploded when the crew was discussing you two under a blood red sky at Red Rock. First, Nate said it was like a blood red moon. I was driving and started convulsing laughter. And then I know where Aaron says, Sunday, bloody Sunday, dude. That's what it's about. Under a blue, blood red sky is a lyric from the song New Year's Day, not Sunday, bloody Sunday. Yeah. I don't even know if I understand this entire comment. <laughs> yeah, I made a joke that didn't work. <coughs> I know that's not from that. I thought song. it was a good joke. Yeah, I think no, this guy is kidding. getting a little too into you too. Yeah, don't, I think I don't think any of us listen to you two that much. Yeah, this guy's passionate. He's a passionate you two fan. I could I'm be sorry wrong. I'm not sure it's a guy. I know about mm-hmm. two you two songs, and uh, one is "It's a Beautiful Day." That's well, a great song. Oh, that's late in the game. Yeah, too. yeah. That's like forty years into their career. Yeah. yeah, I'll I'll be on Santosh's side then. Okay, if you are on the opposite, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> With any of it. How was Red Rocks, by the way? Oh, did we not talk about that? No, no. I haven't oh, seen it. Oh, Red Rocks was then. wild. Yeah. It, did it rain? It did rain. Yeah. Red Rocks was crazy. During your set, it was raining? Uh, it rained uh, probably the back half of my dad's set, and I would say just 10 minutes of my set. Uh, but it's, 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 I mean, it's very overwhelming. I mean, it was like, you know, it was a little chilly, but everybody was like there. It's so many people, dude. Yeah, we posted the we Justin Schubert got a great footage. I mean, it's just it's a lot of people, man, and it's like pretty overwhelming. They put my face on the wall. I didn't know they were doing that, and they put that up there. And uh, yeah, it's a great video that captures like when Graham's out. You can see all the people. When I went out, it's really tough to see, but it's uh, the crowd. I mean, it's just it goes straight up. It's a very unique. Uh, experience very you know such yeah. a cool spot it just it looked amazing man yeah it's we were there kind of all day and it was just a wild mm. i mean it's you know an overwhelming <clears throat> time uh and then you know those disco balls going off before yeah, man, man that looks crazy yeah it looks yeah. awesome yeah yeah it looks awesome and there was a raccoon apparently yeah, right. I saw, uh, the video. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know. They said he was climbing on the rock behind me during the show. Really? I had no idea, <laughs> but they were. I think people were watching that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I. You know, it'd be awesome to go back there and go to a show too. Like I would love to go see a show there too. Uh, but it was. Yeah, it, I mean, just you know, awesome. And all the people that came out and people people traveled for that. I mean, that meant a lot, and that made it a very special thing. Just like Sunday's um, Sunday Bloody Sunday. Sunday Bloody Sunday. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Uh, Chelsea Arrington, <laughs> Nate at minute 30. It could be true that rant that I rant when I get tired. Nate at minute 120. Let me tell you something. There's so many famous people, and they're all alive. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. I got my energy back. Uh, Michael Hayes, congratulations on your 150 episode after Nate's tour rant. I find it fitting now, the episode was released on Bob Dylan's 82nd birthday because Bob Dylan has been on his uh, appropriately, appropriately named Never Ending Tour since June 7th, 19, 1988. Made Nate Land last as long. That's insane. Yeah. I like never, that. Oh, Never Ending Tour. So his tour is just called the Never Ending yeah, Tour? Just, I guess. Yeah. I guess he's not even claiming that he's yeah. ending. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I guess just do that. Yeah. You know? Just keep singing until nobody can understand anything mm. you're saying. Well, he's been there for a while. Yeah. I think my buddy worked his show and he's convinced that it's not actually Bob Dylan oh, performing yeah. these shows. That it's it's a guy dressed up as Bob Dylan. Oh, really? Yeah. He 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 worked it. He was like he showed up, had a hoodie on, would never interact with anybody, didn't want anyone to see <clears> his <throat> face, and then on stage he stands back really far and he doesn't want the camera zoomed in too much on his face. So he's convinced it's it's an imposter. 
People are just milking and, the and I, Dylan money. I relayed that to somebody in the industry involved with concerts, and I've never looked dumber in it. I go, I heard <laughs> yeah. it's not actually Bob Dylan. The guy's like, yeah, you're an idiot. 100% is. And I was like, all right. Well, well, well people, I'm- they don't want to get into that, but <laughs> yeah. that's possible. I mean, it's. I don't even know who's going to a Bob Dylan show anymore, but it's possible. I went. It was the roughest concert I've ever been to. It yeah. was, yeah. Uh, I, I wish I hadn't have gone. Because yeah. it tainted my memory of well, him. Bob Dylan's been putting forever. out albums like every year forever. And it's like, I haven't liked an album he put out since, you know, before I was born. Tell you, he didn't play a song written before 2010 yeah. when I saw him. He was playing the new stuff. Nobody knows it. Yeah. Just tough to listen just, to. We just want to see Blowing in the Wind out here. And <laughs> He didn't play any old stuff? No. Like whatever that song, I don't know, dude. Don't we know were him. sitting around waiting for a song that people recognized, and he would just the refuse times to play they are it. a changing. None of that. The hurricane. None of the hits, dude. All new stuff. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Tangled up in blue. I mean, come on. Well, 2010 was that was 13 years ago, so he was 75 or something, or no, or 60 or 72, 69, 68. Old. Yeah. You know, Hootie and the Blowfish. That song. uh I only want to be with you. They got a whole like verse that's like straight from a Bob Dylan song, like the whole verse. Mm-hmm. It's just wild. It's just like he just inserted a whole Bob Dylan verse right in the middle of the song. Is it is it like a honor thing? Maybe <laughs> paying homage. Yeah, yeah. But it's I know. Just a well, whole that's the verse. frustrating homage. thing with music is like that's why I'm, when you always talk about music, it's like you know they get they just do they get away with so much as a comic. You're just like. You can just, even have the same premise. They're like, I you mean, stole that from 40 different comics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's just the same. Like, I think if I even understood music more, I would get even more frustrated. Like, if you could just hear, like, you know, when you see like a little video that's like, this chord is this, whatever, they're just taking this thing from this thing. Mm-hmm. And you're like, all right. And then it's like the people writing the songs and you're like, these dudes are not even writing songs. Like all they have to do is go sing these songs. Yeah. And yeah I think Ed Sharon just won a lawsuit, right? Yeah. Where he was that sued. Was big. It was it was Marvin Gaye. Uh, Marvin Gaye's estate. They try to say he copied it. Yeah. Did he or he on court, apparently he brought out a guitar yeah. in the court and he was like, I want to show you how common this particular chord progression is yeah and just played through like a bunch of songs in it and won the case wow yeah. there's a guy that does that a video there's an act you've seen that video of an the act? four chords yeah the axis of awesome mm-hmm. or something yeah yeah i've seen them a lot of people do that because it's just there's only so many chords that sound good together that's yeah. got to be the worst when you're like you stole this from me and then you're like actually here's how common that is yeah, yeah. and you was think he, was you marvin this- gay the first one or I don't know. Yeah. But it's like just thinking you have this truly unique thing that everybody's been doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, Marvin Gaye, it might have been. I mean, he's so old that you're like, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but he was on the front of it. It's like you see comics sometimes and they have some subject matter that's just been talked about. They're not stealing it, but it's like some older comics. And you're like, I don't know, man. They probably came up with it. Yeah. Like they were, yeah. they've been doing comedy for 50 years. Like, yeah. so there's a Steve Martin album I like where he's tapping on the mic going, Is this thing on? Is this thing on? And it sounds so hacky, but you're like, He might have been the first one to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Michael Hayes, congratulations on your 150 episode. <laughs> we had 100. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I already did that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Matthew Parrish, I was at the Garth Brooks concert at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge <coughs> last year. And when he played Colin Baton Rouge, it registered as an earthquake at the LSU seismograph. Ooh, wow. I got that one. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that I got the word? Yeah. Oh, um, everything. Yeah. Thank you. You're saying, I've always heard about LSU home football games being so loud that it's mm. registered as an earthquake. I think their seismograph just. Really sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's a lot, need of, to a lot of earthquakes it. going on at LSU. Yeah. yeah. It's loud. Well, that would be if I don't if you could pick a time to be at the stadium, would would you rather be at that time or say the LSU beat Taliban? What what's a big game? Oh, I'd rather be at a football game. I yeah. don't know. I wouldn't want to be at the one where they beat Alabama. I would like to be at uh, Garth Brooks, I think. <laughs> well, I'm just saying for a moment. What's They'd an both LSU be moment? Great. They both would be pretty great for an LSU moment. Like I don't know, man. I, there's part of me that Colton Baton Rouge in with all those people, and then he yeah. starts playing it. That would be insane. Yeah, 
and everybody's on the same page. Yeah. So you got a stadium of everybody's on the same page. Where if you have a football game, there's still a lot of people that are not happy, even though you're watching this great thing. Now I'm picking a team too that we're not fans. Like there's no reason right. for us to be. It's not right. it's taking all our fandom out of it. And just being like, would you rather be there for that Garth Brooks? And we're huge sports fans. Or if I could think of, you know, I'm, I'm thinking like that, you know, the Auburn, Alabama, like the where he ran it back or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Like where you're seeing some moment. That one like, would be pretty awesome. The, yeah. the kickoff. But I still, I don't know six. if you yeah. could top that. It's like, wh- Call what? Call Baton Rouge, in Baton Rouge. What's registering on the seismograph? The noise or were they stomping their feet? I mean, what I was happening? I think everything. Uh, just, yeah, all of it. The vibrations. Simulated an earthquake. I'm not buying it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Seems like they make the stadium collapse. No, no, so it, it, can, it can hold an earthquake. Can it? Yeah, it probably registers as a small earthquake, and they just say it registers as an earthquake. Yeah, like a real tiny one. Like, like a tremor. Yeah. I don't yeah. think people people didn't die. Yeah, like an aftershock. No, well. <clears throat> Tom Robinson <laughs> totally disagree with Dusty on the butcher shop, All not right. knowing how to cook meat. That question should be for a chef. The butcher can tell you all about the cut of the meat, but cooking questions should be reserved for a chef or a cooking expert. Yeah, Solid. sure, sure. I mean, if you you know you're looking for the best way to cook it, but I just think if you're if you're a uh, maybe have a general knowledge right. of what to do with it, because if people are coming in there to buy meat from you and you're like, I don't know, do whatever you want, and then you take it out of there, you don't cook it well, it's not good. You don't go back to the butcher shop because you're like that meat wasn't good. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm I so, agree with, I'm with Tom. Tom Robinson. So <laughs> have a general well, that's but you guys don't run a butcher shop, so you're like not trying to get repeat customers. Yeah, but uh, but the butcher's like I'll tell you the kind of meat to cook, and then it's uh, if he if if he knows about the cut of the meat, like when you the cooking, like even if you go to a uh, restaurant and they come tell you the cut of the meat, like they're like the, I don't know, they can go tell you like, well, this is this part of the, yeah. like, you want to know all that stuff. Cooking it is like, I don't know, dude, if you want it well done, like my mom likes it burnt. I just think and- some general suggestions, maybe even, maybe you even sell some cookbooks inside the butcher shop. Look for some opportunities to make a little extra money. I could, you can talk me into that. Yeah. You go, actually, we have a lamb book over here for sale. Tells you yeah. all how to cook lamb. Mm-hmm. You make a little extra money for yourself. Yeah. I think this butcher shop's missing an opportunity. As I imagine, Tom Robinson is missing some opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You think the last sell bottled water in Opelika? I do think so. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to I was in my hometown, and uh, and I've never heard of this, but I went to a restaurant and I go in. It's twelve. It's noon. There's nobody in there, which is a red flag. And uh, on a Saturday, and then I, I order all my food, and then I go and I'd take a I'll take a water, and the lady goes, "There's algae in the water, so it tastes a little funny." I go, "All right, I'll have a bottled water." She goes, "We don't have bottled water." <laughs> And it just, I left. I left mm, the restaurant. It yeah. made me question everything that was going on in there. You know there's algae in the water. A lady behind me, like the owner, was like, oh, it's Opelika. There's been algae in the water for 10 years. I grew up here. My family lives here. Never heard of the algae in the water. Mm. And it's like, why? So for 10 years, this has been going on, and you've not thought to run down to the grocery store and pick up a case of water. Yeah, You could have sold me that water for $3 a bottle, and I would have bought it. Mm. they're also doing everything else with water too they're washing the dishes with it they're cooking with it you're washing these dishes with this algae water back here well diet coke too if you got soda it might be oh sure yeah it'd be a little weird there's algae in everything yeah Yeah. so I'm like you know get yourself some bottled water in here yeah make a little extra money instead they lost the wholesale when they could have added on yeah I'm you know I'm out here hustling now they're getting bad, bad publicity yeah, I won't tell them the – and this kind of – it's not really in the Opal like I grew up in. It's closer to the Auburn side, so I'm not going <laughs> to yeah, okay. you know, I'm not gonna blame Opelika for this. Yeah, mm. it's a little bit on that fringe. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, eh, like a no man's land. Mm-hmm. This part of the city didn't even exist when I lived there. It was all mm-hmm. woods. Yeah, so. um, you're, you're narrowing it down. Maybe the animals are fighting back, you know? They go, yeah. There's one town in Alabama that's got a big algae problem. They have one restaurant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm blaming the restaurant, yeah. but I well, will say- Didn't I went, you go to multiple restaurants? I went though? to the next restaurant over and I go, let me get a bottled water. They go, we don't have bottled water. And I'm like, why does no one have bottled yeah. water in this town? I would think you'd have bottled water if you go, like, why did they, they felt like they had to tell you the water tastes different. 
That that was the only restaurant that was doing it. Oh. The others were like, no, we have a filter on it. I mean, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. The water's yeah. fine here. Yeah. Mm. This restaurant was dropping the ball. Mm. Illinois comment, comments. Zach Farber, it is killing me that none of you are calling out Illinois as one of the most recognizable states on the map in the Illinois episode. You put that you put that sucker on a piece of paper all on its lonesome, and no way you aren't calling that out by name. Not even top 25? Come on. Love you guys. Thanks for the laughs every week. I disagree. I People disagree completely. Got yeah. really fired up about the state shapes, and mm. it seems like the general consensus is everyone thinks their state right. is very recognizable. Right. Everyone thinks we're ridiculous for thinking Tennessee would be top ten. <laughs> but I mean, even I, on even I'm on doing this, you a favor, I think it's number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even on this podcast, they both said Alabama looks more. I think yeah. Texas is the most recognizable. Yeah. But but I think we all agreed on Texas. We did, but. Everyone seems to think their state is the most recommended. Yeah. Like to me, that here's what I, the way I was thinking about it later is that if you you know sometimes if you pull a chip out of a bag and it's shaped like something, mm. you would all be like, wow, that uh, if a Texas shaped chip, you'd be like, there's probably a million chips that look like Illinois. You don't even notice. Well, if, if you're doing that case, I would almost change it to Florida. If a chip looks like Florida, Texas would yeah. be a tough chip. Like that's what I'm saying. It would be yeah. amazing because it'd be like, wow. Well, that 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 if it's that way, which is a good way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say Florida because it's Florida's so obvious. Florida's yeah. very Florida's so obvious. So if you had a chip that was like Florida, Texas is like it would it'd be hard with a chip. You would have to be just cut perfectly. But Florida would be just like. An L, almost like. Yeah. And then if you, you showed yeah. me this state, I would go, "Oh, that's one of the Great Lakes." <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Michigan people were very fired up. They're like, "Our state looks like a mitt." But if you called it up like that with the Upper Peninsula, I agree right. about Michigan, though. Right, I do agree about Michigan. Michigan is true. It's a, it's a mitt. But with, the, but with the UP, I mean, if it was just out of context, yeah. what is this? I, people always do that though with the hand. They'll tell you where they're from in Michigan based yeah. on the hand. Yeah. I mean, I, that UP, I'll be honest with you, I think I learned about that mm-hmm. on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that about that. That there was another part to it. <laughs> I had no idea. And I've been to Michigan a ton. It's the a UP part. looks like a big whale up there. I mean, I want to go to the yeah. UP so bad now. But it's, it's, it's beautiful great. up there. It is great. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, what town is up there? Sault Ste. Marie is right at the border. Yeah. and then Yeah, we did a casino up there, Sault Ste. Marie. And there's also Harris, Michigan. is another casino we did. Was Mackinac Island, was that up there? Or was Mackinac, that- Mackinac. Yeah. yeah, that's on the way. across. The way. It's the last thing, I think, on the lower peninsula before you go over. Yeah, I've never – that's – yeah, I, I'm very excited. I, I also learned there. about um, – people pointed out the, um, the Baker Man states. Oh, yeah. You Where's know this? Like- where it's like uh, Tennessee is the frying pan and Kentucky's the chicken. Yeah, you knew yeah. this. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So look at think of Iowa yep. as the, a fa- a head. Yeah, Minnesota is like a little chef's hat, and then this is a guy right here. And then the yeah, Louisiana's so the boot. Louisiana's his feet, and he's hold Tennessee's a frying pan, Kentucky's a piece of chicken, or something on top of the pan. Yeah, it's got to be chicken because KFC. Yeah. Indiana's the smoke. Uh, that's, all right. <laughs> I mean, there's images that show it where yeah. it's more obvious than that. But, but yeah, I never heard that. Yeah, is it when can you draw a guy on the states and you're like, oh, I see it now because it's an actual drawing of a man holding I bet a you front can, I bet you could even Google it. Too. I know. Well, I was just trying to. You know, well, you don't I'm have trying to, to move it along. I'm trying yeah. to imagine it for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cody Huffstedler. I am a palliative <laughs> care <clears throat> palliative a, a palliative care chaplain at a hospital in hospital in Denver. Each day we start rounds with a short reflection using an inspirational quote or something. Today I instructed our entire team to come up with five liquids that would dispense from their fingers. Each member of the team, doctors, social workers, chaplains, spend the whole day discussing, looking up various liquids and crafting their perfect starting five. You have brought joy and levity to a sometimes difficult place to work. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, right. That's great. Yeah. Unless you're having surgery that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, be, be. Yeah. 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 You Doc, kinda, if you, you prepped it up, all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wake up out of it a little bit, and they're going like, <laughs> yeah. shooting with their you fingers. Novocaine and sedatives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Allison Popolo, Popolo, that's a good last name. 
Popolo. That's a very fun. The Popolo family. Yeah. You'd be happy if they were coming over. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, the Who's Popolos? Coming over? The Popolos. <laughs> like, oh, I love the Popolos. Uh, <laughs> Nate is right. The Cheese Egg Factory does have breakfast, and the one I go to has brunch on Saturday and Sunday. Case closed. <laughs> I don't know if the case is closed. <laughs> case is closed. I mean, that's one more part of it, but it was a well, pretty Well, she said debate. it's singular. Like, maybe it's just this coming Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's on... I don't... I would take that as all... Oh, fun. I'm joking. Oh. It's just funny she didn't say Saturdays and Sundays. Oh. Do you have to say Saturdays and Sundays? I think that would mean all... Saturday Sundays were. You mm-hmm. wouldn't just say the Jesus Factory does have breakfast and the one I go to has brunch on Saturday and Sunday. You could, a and bad means, faith reading of this, you could interpret it to mean this upcoming Saturday and Sunday. One know, but time you're only. having to, yeah. But gr- grammatically, wouldn't it be Saturdays and Sundays? You could, yeah, that would just be more clear that this is. But if you don't put the S's, is it fine too? I think it works either way. You just, just depends on how you read it. I knew what she meant. I was just. But if you if you said like you're like I'm having brunch on Saturday and Sunday, and then I came next week, and you were like, no, I said last week. <laughs> yeah, but if you Saturday said it like that, Sunday. yeah. But she's saying she does have a breakfast, and the one I go to has brunch on Saturday and Sunday. So this you, week. I think you would you would say, yeah, okay, all right. Katie Tyler, I'm the corporate dietitian at. Panera Bread. Oh, Ooh, look at that. Wow. That's big time. I managed the nutrition, ingredient, allergen, and food policy information that you see on our menus. Aaron, thank you for being a Panera fan. All right. I have heard you mention Panera a few times, Nate. I hope you give us another try. <laughs> Thanks for uh, the continued laugh, gentlemen. See you in St. Louis in October, Nate. All right. I love Panera. I, I don't like ever talk right, about right, it. I right. go to Panera. Yeah, and, I, I, and I was never trash in Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. This is, there was more me. to it. She mentioned they've cut back her hours because Panera's after your slamming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's no. working 20 hours a week now, but They're, she's still going to try to come to your show. Oh, I love Panera. Uh, we can talk to her about what I can eat. I, we eat Panera a lot because mm-hmm. when I'm, a, I'm a counting calories. Uh yeah, I'm a, we went to Panera this week. We we go to Panera. I went right. to a Panera the other day. We were the person saying gave me a free tea. On a, oh, look at that. I thought it was yeah. a rare argument where you both made really strong points. Oh, yeah, thank you. I think Katie would even say one restaurant the rest of your life, <laughs> Cheesecake Factory. It's just too. <laughs> but I think the debate was all your meals have to come from this. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, I just make just just yes. clarifying a few things because a lot of the uh, the pushback mm-hmm. I would say from people they thought we were just arguing which restaurant was yes. better, uh, which was not what we were no, doing. No, no, no. You know, you're right. It's all your meals have to come to. And you, I'd want to throw some other restaurants up into. Well, the of course, but if it was fun. just between those two, yeah. yeah. For that, well, go yeah. ahead, Dusty. Throw. Yeah. Up there. What would? Well, I mean, I'm just saying, if we were to reopen the debate, I'm not saying I'm prepared to reopen it, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I might go. I don't know. Does Cheesecake Factory have steaks? Yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh it's yeah. lean and heavy Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Cheesecake Factory just has everything. Yeah. So you're, if you yeah. got to go to one restaurant the rest of your life, you're it's like going to 15. You basically go to one restaurant that has 15 restaurants. It's like go to a food court. You're like going to a food court. Yeah. And you get and you can just do anything. So as a you're eating it for the rest of your life. That's what. I mean, it is. it's a restaurant that I never ever go to. But yeah, I mean if. They have steaks. Yeah, I don't go to it. I go to Panera way more than I go to Cheesecake Factory. There's 308 Cheesecake Factories in the country. That's what someone said is interesting. If you had to go on where they're at now, they all have to stay where they stay. People would live next to the restaurants. Yeah. And there are 2,100 Panera Breads. Wow. Yeah. So, look, we work on the road. You know, it's a big part of it, I think. It's just ease yeah. of access. Good thing a lot of these clubs are located right next to the same shopping center as a cheesecake That's factory. True. <laughs> that is true. All the funny bones yeah. have a cheesecake factory downstairs. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Will Hall, for the snail dilemma, you have $10 million. Use that money to develop a way to trap the snail for good, and then you don't have to live in fear. Oh, can you trap him? I, I guess? thought that was part of the... Yeah. I thought you just couldn't kill it. Right. Yeah. No, well, somebody you can mentioned just put a box over it. Somebody mentioned yeah. just keep it in a jar. Yeah, a lot of people you said know. just trap it and yeah. problem solved. That's why I don't have $10 million. Guy dollars, like, you know? That guy goes, take it, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And he changes it. Uh, Nick Greenfield. Uh, the Great Chicago Fire jumped the river because the river was incredibly polluted. The river actually burned as well due to the pop- 
uh, pollutants in it. Also, with Chicago being very windy, it is easy for fire to spread and hard to contain it. That's how it jumped in. Windy mm. city. Windy yep. city. Not the windiest city in the country. I've though. heard that. Yeah. It's called Windy City for the politics. Oh, uh, because of them talking. That's right. Oh, wow. I learned that when I lived there. All the yeah. hot air being yeah. blown around. What would be the windiest city, though? I think I know the DC. answer. No. Oh. Oh, time for <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry yeah. I stepped on that so quick. Yeah. That was good. Mm. That was a lot more entertaining than the real answer. Yeah. Midland, Shy- Midland, Texas. Cheyenne, Wyoming. Is it? I think so. Yeah. I'll tell you, Texas has got some wind. Yeah. Midlands, it's windy. <laughs> yeah. I bet Midlands, uh, Buffalo? No, look, this is this list is not that late. Yeah, order. is there? Uh, I would think Kansas would be uh, in the running, just being so flat that it's saying that Boston. Just... Well, this is it depends on how you want to determine what's the windiest. <laughs> this is average annual wind speed of the of the. Well, that might be a, that's a pretty good way. Okay, see, so yeah, I've been there. It's pretty dang windy. But, uh, I don't agree with this. Yeah, I, I'm gonna find one that has Cheyenne as number one, and I'll agree with that. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, are we looking at just rogue wind gusts? Or are we looking I just mean, at, like, what's the? Did you just type in what's the windiest city in America? In well, America? I'm saying there's yeah. a lot of different ways to answer that. Yeah. Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah. Wichita, Kansas. I'm no Buffalo list crazy. really has Love Cheyenne it. on it. Corpus Christi and Lubbock are on there. Maybe yeah. how windy is Cheyenne? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you need to try to find some list. It was a George Strait song. You need to go to Cheyenne, Cheyenne's <laughs> yeah. website, Cheyenne.com. It's pretty windy right now, 19 miles per hour. Wow. Right wow. Now, so. That's a lot of wind. That's good. That helped. Yeah. That helped your case. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, last one. Uh, Kevin Robleski. Previously, Phoenix, Arizona had the first McDonald's franchise and drive through according to the Nate Land, Arizona episode. <laughs> now it's Illinois. That's why I love this podcast. Goodbye, folks. Well, he's right. Um, I said on the Arizona episode that they had the first franchise, and they did by one year. So I was wrong about Illinois. Ray Kroc opened his first franchise in the eastern United States a year later in Illinois. Mm, but okay. Technically, I think Phoenix beat it by a year. Wow. So okay. I'll just start saying every state. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You know, they just all deserve a little credit. Did you see it? Guys, see the Nashville man who ate McDonald's on every meal for 100 straight days? And lost fifty eight pounds. Uh, I think I heard about it. Yeah. He's sick. I think he That's, is. No, I mean I think you remember the uh, thing we did at the beginning of the episode where why Nate lost so much weight because he was so <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't read the article. Yeah, he's a Nashville guy, and and he said his uh, I guess his strategy was just don't eat the whole meal. He just eats. Yeah. Part I think. Of it. Yeah. I think I did see this. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. He would eat one burrito and half of a hash brown and half of a muffin for breakfast, and then he'd eat the other halves for lunch. So this is what we do with Eric, with Eric on the road when he helps me with mine. It's, 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 it's as simple as can, I can't count calories, and that's all it is. It's the calories are uh, a very simplistic way of it is no matter what you're eating, like you can go eat McDonald's, you can eat Oreo cookies. If, you, if I'm under... You know, I try to eat 1,800 calories. So if I'm under my, if 2,400 or 2,200 is my maintenance, if I'm under that, I will lose weight. So if I'm at 1,800, I will lose, you know, we're trying to do like a pound a week or something. And so I could eat Oreo cookies. Now, how you're going to feel is a different thing. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you could lose weight eating ice cream, anything, if you, but you just keep it under the, Think. I don't know what Weight Watchers is, I think, to a yeah. degree. Yeah, it's like, and then you do notice when you only have 1,800 calories, you really do think about like, all right, well, is this going to fill me up? Like, I don't, like, if you eat something that you know you're going to be hungry, and then you're like, usually a lot of stuff is a lot of calories, mm-hmm. and then it's just not that filling. And you're like, oh, I wish I would have. We went to Double Dog in Bowling Green. Yeah. And uh, I had their chili hot dog, and it said on the thing is 500 calories on my fitness pal. And it was like, I was like, that's like a fun one. Yeah. That's kind of like pretty crazy that you're like, oh, 500 calories for less than I thought it would be. Way less than I thought it would Mm. be. Yeah. I mean, it's not a huge hot dog. 
It's one hot dog, but I mean the chili dog. Uh, yeah, five hundred calories. I was like, that was it was a solid. I did that and I got the green beans, and uh, that's what I had there. The guy was there very. That would nice be the there. healthiest thing at Cheesecake Factory. I know that. Does Cheesecake put their calories on their menu? Oh yeah, yeah. they oh, did. Yeah. yeah, a lot of four and five digit items mm. on there. Let me tell you. Wow. Yeah, they, I don't know about they, five they, digits. That's, that's, that's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Eleven thousand calorie meal would be pretty crazy. They'll let you do. That's you can that share five it. pound uh, Hershey bar. Is how much again? Eleven. It was. I think it was eleven thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you eat that, you're going to need a doctor. That's why Zocdoc can help you find and book in person or telemedicine appointments for medical or dental care. That's pretty good. That is helpful. Thank you, Aaron. For people that are on the go or work different hours like we do, when someone is just really good at what they do, it could be a waiter, a chef, or a doctor. Maybe a comedian. You know you're in good hands. When you find the right doctor, you can feel it. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. No more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews. Millions of people use ZocDoc free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient, oh, who is patient reviewed. <laughs> <laughs> patient, kind, gentle. You should be patient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a patient doctor who's also patient reviewed. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Nate and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash Nate. ZocDoc, ZocDoc dash, ZocDoc.com slash Nate. There we go. That's a tough one. You were patient with it. Yeah. Uh, all right. This week, what are we doing? I had one more thing, but maybe oh, we can save here it. There we go. No. Well, I don't know. Because no, I know we want it. to get the. Well, <clears throat> this is kind of more Dusty news, but Dusty's wife, Hannah. Just became a U.S. citizen. That's right. Oh yeah. wow, man. she's Canadian. Yeah, well, was Canadian. Now she's yeah. uh, now she's an American citizen. That's cool. And she had to take a uh, a test to become a citizen. So I thought maybe we could just look at this test yeah. and see how well maybe you do as yeah. The first a US question citizen. in particular that was on the test that I saw, I really wanted to do man on the street with people just to ask them this question because I got it wrong and everybody I've asked it to got it wrong. Let me see. Yeah, you what, can't look at it because they have the answers there. Uh, read me the question. I have not looked. Is this the question you're talking about? Yeah. What is the supreme law of the land? Uh, supreme law of the land. Freedom. That's exactly what I said. It's exactly the answer I said. But it's going to be shocking to you. Oh, it's not freedom. No. It's, it's weird. Uh, no weird. murder. Weird. That is weirded in a way... But I, I understand why you could yeah. get that. Is, uh, I would have got it. Did I say weirded in a way? I think you did. I, oh, Supreme God. law of the land <laughs> That's is of our land. Yeah. The number one law is uh, be nice. Or yeah. what is the what is See, the it's... main? I would word it like, what's the main authority for law and order? Oh, yeah. It's uh, not well, the government. You're getting closer. FBI. The Constitution. <laughs> the, the, the Constitution. The Constitution. Well, the moment you hear it, you're like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. But I said freedom. That's what yeah. I said. Yeah. Yeah. Can you name the three things the Constitution does? It uh, tells us what to do. Kind of. And uh, it, it, it has all the laws written on it. You ain't getting in. And, <laughs> yeah, you, and uh, you're done, dude. Yeah. Uh, what does it do? Sets up the government. Yeah. Defines the Said government. That. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And protects basic rights of America. Exactly. <laughs> and see, with this test, they're looking for one of these answers, right? Yeah. So, um, you Keep know, me. so you would say sets up government. Keep on there you go. All right. What is one right or freedom from the First Amendment? What is one right of freedom? O right, right or, or freedom. freedom from the First Amendment? Uh, bear arms is the Second Amendment. <laughs> freedom of speech. There That's you right. go. Yeah. Freedom of speech. Yeah. What do you call the first? And I should be allowed to say the wrong answer. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. You really spin this thing on its head. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what do you call the first 10 amendments of the Constitution? Uh, the first 10 amendments. Yeah, they're commonly referred to as this. Oh, Top ten, yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, the referred to as, you know, 
the best, the most important, the VIP. The Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights. You heard that? Yeah, yeah I have yeah. heard of that. I have heard of that. Why would they separate them? I know. I've been yeah. going over this test for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what was the war? <laughs> Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Silver War. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. What, what did Susan B. Anthony do? We're jumping around here. This is uh, potpourri. Ugh. She wrote the uh, uh, Na- Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> it's like good guess. I mean, it's way wrong, but it, yeah. but it's uh, the national. Oh, national. She, yeah. Oh, she did the flag. She she. That was uh, Betsy Ross. Uh, yeah, she actually didn't do anything that specific. Yeah, yeah. She just fought for women's rights. Fought for civil rights. <laughs> what? <laughs> Name Seriously. one war fought by the United States in the 1900s. Let's ease into it. Uh, oh, you just need one. We fought one in war. Several. Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Gulf War, the Gulf early War. 90s. I mean, yeah, you barely got that. You could go one or one more, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm more current. Than yeah, you go yeah. with your, you know, the war of your childhood. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, now we're in like World War II stuff. What was the main concern of the U.S. during the Cold War? Oof. Temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Same concerns yeah. we're dealing with now, really. It's yeah, it's just cold. You got to go. What is it Russia? It's cold. You want to be Russia? It's cold. Yeah. yeah, it's cold up there. Communism. Why would they call it the Cold War? Because it wasn't a hot war. Because it was cold. They cold weren't war actively fighting. Because there wasn't an actual. Bullets weren't fired. Oh, more like just, a buildup of tension. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I'm watching the Americans. That's what that's about. Mm-hmm. Okay. A lot of arguments. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of more like. It was well. The American is, it. is the cold. It. It's it's mm. it's it's just like uh, it's all behind the scenes stuff. Like, so that's what they say, or they just made that up for the. Is there a lot of cold wars? But that's you could call a war. You could call it a. You call something cold. I've never like heard that. hot war. Have we ever said hot war? No, it's not a commonly used expression, but that's just... Depending on how attractive it is. Yeah. You know? That's and a then hot war. Cold war is only used once for this. And that's what we call the struggle between... Yeah, like North Korea, Soviet South Korea, do they use that term? or No, I mean, they have legit landmines and stuff over right, there, I think. Well, yeah. I was but trying I mean, to think of one who actually yeah. don't fight, but are always yeah. looking at each other. Uh, you gave them some hard ones. There's some easier ones on there. Name one U.S. territory. You uh, stick with the tough ones. Yeah. You think uh, that's a tough one? I mean, I know it, but th- some of those the are so Louisiana easy. Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. See, I would yeah. take all these answers if I were administering yeah. the test. Yeah. That's pretty clever. Uh, Louisiana Purchase comes up later on the test. Does it really? Yeah. What's the territory? The Puerto Rico is the one. That Guam, is Puerto the one. Rico. I've been there. Yeah. 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 yeah Virgin Islands. Yeah. Why does the flag have 13 stripes? 13 colonies. Yeah. All right. Boom. Why does it have 50 stars? 50 states. Yep. There you go. When do we celebrate Independence Day? July 4th. Now, name two national U.S. holidays. Uh, This one's a little tough. Martin Luther King Day. There you go. And uh, Groundhog Day. (laughs) You were doing so well. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King Day. That should be one. And uh, the national national holiday. Yeah. Okay, Day, President's Day. There you go. All right. Boom. Got it. The I easy think- ones are Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh. Those are the easy <laughs> As I'm going through these, that's how I'm telling Hannah. I go, these I are the easy ones. Just yeah. remember this, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Why would I? Yeah. They would probably flag me. I could get every answer right. <laughs> yeah. And they go, well, we don't like that you said MLK Day and President's Day <laughs> yeah. as your yeah. national holidays. Well, Hannah said there was a writing test, too, that I guess is not on there, where they ask you a question, you have to write it back in English. I think you would have maybe a hard time with, mm-hmm. with that one. Mm-hmm. And then you had to prove that you're married to someone that's not a sham yeah. marriage. Oh, we already, how is that? Well, we already yeah. went through that process. It was actually pretty easy because we got into it. You know, we're both creatives. So we put together this binder. I went through, like, thanks to, like, you know, 
thanks to the, all the spy technology that I hate, I was able to go through like my phone where I've taken pictures and it tells me what date, where we were at. We put together this big binder of our whole dating thing. The just, timeline of your relationship. Yeah, just to prove like, hey, and then the, I showed, I went in talking to the lady. It's like an older Southern lady. And I give her the binder. She's like, whoa, I need like this picture, this picture. I just think that she could tell we were a real couple mm-hmm. and we didn't need all this. But I think sometimes it's like, I don't know, this is my feeling. Like if you're like a, you know, like a Russian dude and you're and you're marrying a girl here and it's like, they're like, well, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think Canada and I, I think Canada, Mexico, the United States, I think that's all feasible that you would be getting married. Mm-hmm. Right. But didn't she almost get your birthday wrong? Uh, maybe, but uh, I, I really don't think that, I mean, that's not an issue. Yeah, I don't. Will there be a swearing in ceremony? I think there will be a ceremony, yeah. Is it on TV? <laughs> I, d- I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> Should I mean, be. I'll tell them I'm attending, see if that yeah. can bump up the ratings. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can throw out the first pitch. You did pretty good. That's pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, there were I easier ones on there. I think you're a citizen. Thank you. But the first question is the one that I really like because it's like, it's so obvious when you hear the answer. Yeah. But the way the question is worded, I mean, that's what I said, too. I said freedom. Yeah. All right. So animal fights. Let's see if we can. We're in the Sweet we're 16. We're finishing it. All right. We're finishing animal fights today. All right. So we're down to Sweet 16. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. They've too. had a few weeks to rest up. Everybody yep. should be fresh. Everybody's fresh. Briefed Everybody's on the go. rules. No guns. Well, we'll no see. No guns. We'll see. But we're going all the way. We're finishing it. It's going to be over. Everybody can move on with their lives. You, you guys went ahead and skipped the uh, bear past the piranha. I think we did a few episodes. Where we're like, we know that one's going to be. Okay. Yeah, and we might have a few kind of layups here. Bear might have had a these. tougher time with do the some layups. Fish. What's a layup? And the, I think we already the, covered the layup. The only other one that already advanced to the elite eight was the hippopotamus over the spider. Yeah, <sighs> tarantula. I hope that. Yeah, it's a. If it were a black widow, that might be a bit. I think the, the in the cassowary <laughs> over the well. No, we haven't done that one. I yet. think the cassowary. Cassowary is my. I I, I think it's a. It's your sleeper pick problem. for the. Yeah, it's yeah. just a. I mean, where's the well's the, enormous, but I think over time. Where's the fight taking place? Is it in the water or is it on the land? Uh, Remember the the Roman Colosseum has all types of terrains in the yeah. middle, so there's so enough the, space for a whale to kind of swim around. But how is he getting to the cassowary? How's he halfway? Well, I think that's part of it. Is yeah. I don't think he can. Who can get? He can't get to him. Yeah, he can't get to so him. He's, he's got to come kinda, up for air. Cassowary's just kind of nicking him when he comes oh, up for air, yeah, just yeah. kind of hitting him. Yeah, this yeah. battle takes a long time. Battle How does the cassowary get to the whale? Battle of a thousand Well, he's cuts got to come up something. for air. What did they say? And then he nicks him. Yep, and he's, he floats around like a duck, something you didn't know they could do. <laughs> and then he just flies away. <laughs> yeah. Like he just gets away. They're flightless, right? Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't well, think they could fly. This yeah. one can get I don't mind the cassowary taking the whale, but. Against the hippo, I'm going to have a bit of a problem. Okay, well, we'll we'll worry about that next round. Yeah, should we go ahead? I mean, I think we agreed. The okay. whale. I don't know how what the whale is going to do. I don't know yeah. how they even fight he's each. He's got to come up for air, and then he's going to go right well, after. Well, I mean, that a hole. whale just beat another whale. So. But it, they were well, both yeah, underwater. Yeah, but they're both underwater. That's an underwater. That was a real fight. fight. Okay. I mean, this one is when the whale comes up for air. I mean, that cassowary is just always going to be. It's like the pop game where you whack a mole whack a mole all right maybe he throws something out and gets stuck in the whales i think that's what the cassowary does he comes up Ah. and he 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 grabs yeah yeah and then he comes and then the whale's trying to shake it out he can't shake it out is anyone a marine biologist yeah (laughs) yeah golf ball yeah Yeah. it's a golf ball it's like crane yeah Yeah. Yeah. it's crane where he hit a golf hey one good shot yeah yeah that's a yeah that cassowary is yeah like in actually this fight might be it was quick. <laughs> yeah, he was ready for it. It turns out this fight was quick. And, yeah. he, he, and he was just, he was like next. Cassowary may even threw some remains. The Cassowary wouldn't last even fight. take questions about the well fight. Yeah. He only wanted to talk about the hippo fight. That's that how coming confident up. he yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we go, but you got a well. I don't think you should overlook it. And he goes, hippo questions only. <laughs> and then, the, I mean, you know, the media was like, oh, this I guy's don't. a jerk. Yeah. Well, let's get past the well. Yeah. yeah. People don't like him yeah. mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. But he would only take hippo questions. All right. Well, we're jumping over to the other side of the board here. We've got an interesting matchup. I can't remember what type of snake we agreed this was. Anaconda? Yeah. Anaconda versus a Komodo dragon. I think no. Komodo dragon. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going Komodo dragon. Okay, Anaconda. 
Ooh. I think Any the Komodo kind of dragon good. bites it, poison spreads throughout, can't grip, can't it's, squeeze. Uh, I don't think they have that much poison, right? Do they? Very poisonous. Or venomous. Venomous. Yeah. What, Komodo dragons? Yeah. Very venomous. I don't even think the venom is going to be the problem. It's it's the strength of the bite alone. Yeah. I think it just it just. I bet these have fought, but I mean, dude, if it if it goes to bite it and that big old snake gets wrapped around it, it's done. It's over. I think if it wraps it, it can still bite it, fill it with poison. How it's like. It's a lizard. Look up and see bend. if they fought because this could be a real fight. Yeah, a that's real a bend. This is a real fight. Yeah, it's an anaconda. I think an anaconda is yeah. more of a. Uh, uh, water type. And it can go in water, too. That's the thing. It kind of sits in the water and just waits, goes under. But maybe the Komodo dragon's waiting in the desert for he's, the he's got a He's got a drink, though. <laughs> maybe not, though. Wait a Anaconda minute. has to drink. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. Gonna the go. whale had a disadvantage because he was in the water, and now you flipped it. He's like, well, oh, because that snake's in that water. Because the snake can come yeah, up out of the water. Versus- the whale is not going to be able to do it. And... Yeah, yeah, listen to what that that's says. That's one video, though. Can you play it? Or? Yeah, I'll unmute, oh my gosh. I'll unmute oh. it for a minute. Yeah. For near water and spends much of its time in the murky water yeah. to help it hide so. and support its massive body. Let me look at it. Komodo dragons are only found on five islands, four of which are in Indonesia's Komodo right. National. Wait, Can you well, go to we the... found it in the yeah, Roman just... Coliseum. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a... Uh, how do you get to the end? I just do don't they think they do ever they fought each other because one is a more of a marshy type place and mm. the other is a dry place. Was yeah, it? they think they live in different parts. But there's no video of these two actually fighting it out. What did that person say? Like, did someone say something? No, these are just videos of people doing basically what we're doing right now. Yeah. But like at the end of it, do they go, and we think this would win? Not that last one. Uh, I mean, look at that the thing. more it's I watch pig. each of them, I gain confidence in each. I mean, the python a, strangling that alligator was impressive, or the anaconda. Sorry, people are excited about this fight. Yeah, this is like this is look at this thing. Prime time. This is on prime yeah. time. You're you're like not looking at it. I don't like looking at it. Stuff getting eaten by animals. So you would not have a good time at this tournament. No, huh? mm-hmm. no. <laughs> oh yeah, he would. <laughs> well, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going Komodo Dragon. Yeah. I'm yeah. going Komodo Dragon. Yeah, I just think it's too it's too powerful. I don't think I don't think it lets the Anaconda get around it. I don't think so either. An alligator's got two mo- mobility issues. Komodo Dragon has got some flexibility. I agree. All right, I'll go Komodo Dragon too. All right. Komodo Dragon. Well, All right. Not, well, not happy about it. That feels yeah. good. Oh, I like a Komodo Dragon versus it's a, a good fight. Bear. That was That's, a good fight. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Interesting one. I like. Uh, I like when it's a flighted animal. Is that what you call it? Flighted. It's called a bird. Well, <laughs> I mean, as opposed to flightless, we've got a bald eagle, America's symbol, versus an ant eater. Ooh, I like how you phrase yeah. that. Uh, I think the eagle, because I mean, the eagle's just going to be just. I'm going. Down. I'm going eagle. This ant eater got very fortunate with the matchup he got. He took down a platypus in the he first round. He took down round. a platypus. Yeah. Yep. And now the eagle and the, yeah, it's just, the eagle's just. I think the like, eagle grabs it, flies in the air, drops it. Mm-hmm. I don't think, can it pick up something as big as an anteater? I don't know if it could pick it up, but it, it'll just come down. That, so. that anteater just doesn't know where to look. I've seen an eagle pick up a goat before. Not in real life, but oh. on a video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what life have you lived, yeah. Dustin? Yeah. <laughs> we usually get five-star reviews <clears throat> For our podcast, we got one four star because Dusty said a barn owl could beat a eagle in mm. a fight. So that is. People take it serious. Really takes that serious. Yeah, it was yeah. that intense. Well, Sorry yeah. about that, guys. Yeah, I don't mean to drag the podcast down. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a ridiculous right. animal fight thing. And <laughs> yeah, it has four stars. Look at that tail. A barn owl may take an eagle, though. I don't. Oh, we got. I mean, this is an anteater unrelated to this particular matchup, but this is an anteater going toe to toe with a jaguar. Well, it's walking away from it. <laughs> well, it stood its ground and then just goes, I'm getting out of here, and I'm not even scared of you. Yeah. Did it? I th- it's got its back to it the whole time. I think it looked at it right there. Okay. It goes, right. I'm leaving, and you're not going to do a thing yeah, about it, Yeah, what's the brother. twist at the end? These videos, is the twist is nothing? 
That's the twist is that nothing oh. nothing happens. Like they yeah, yeah the Jaguar just like He's like, all right. The thing is, the Jaguar would destroy it if it was smart enough to go. Like, that tail's all fluff. <laughs> yeah. And Eagles will just come down. Let's do Eagle. All right, I'll, I'll give it to you. The you got eagle. the Eagle dropping a goat video? No. Uh, it's out there. Okay, then I, then I could get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't we'll have it. it locked and loaded. No. But I, well, that would show you that it <laughs> yeah. can pick up. It can pick up a lot. Oh, so you think it could just pick up the. Okay. Yeah. What's Polar Bear? You got a polar bear versus a killer whale. Mm. Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm. And then this happens, right? This must be a matchup we've actually seen before. I feel like we say that every time, and the people say they're four thousand miles away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go killer whale. I think the killer whale tricks the polar bear to get in the water, and the polar bear is not too afraid to get in the water, and like is a little confident because he's like, "Well, I do get in the water. I can get in the water." Yeah. And then so he kind of gets in the water and kill where I was like, but this is where I live. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, I think if we get rid of the whale here, we've gotten rid of all our sea creatures and we can move on to total land fights. <laughs> I just don't think it's going to happen. Wait, who, who would the polar bear be fighting? Oh, if it advanced? Yeah. It would be going against the bald eagle. <laughs> yeah. So a bald eagle versus a whale is going to be a tough one. I think whale takes the eagle. Yeah, well, well I, hold on. We're on bear versus whale. Yeah, but I, I'm just saying. You're looking ahead here, Dustin. I think killer whale. I'm saying I think the killer whale talks the whale. I think the polar bear goes, I can get in the water. This fight is taking a long time, and the killer whale's like, you got to come in the water. And the polar bear just is a little confident and goes, all right, dude, I get in the water. Like, have you ever seen me swim? And he thinks he can do it, and the killer whale just dominates it underwater. Never comes back up. Yeah, all right. Never comes back up. I mean, it. Defies yeah. our cassowary I mean, logic, but I will go. Dude, killer whales like go, can, they can go swim on land. Like they come up, boosh. Yeah, like they're a, mammals, a right? Boat. Yeah. They're like a boat. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. so well, you're right. That's, yeah, it does defy our cassowary logic. But this, but. the killer whale does jump in the air a yes. bunch. Shamu. Yeah. yeah. It's so got I killer think in its name. Possibly, mm. it could just jump and land on the bear. Yeah, the other whale, the blue whale or humpback whale, whatever, that, that whale doesn't even want to be there. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. like, boo, boo, boo. Yeah. A lot of blubber. To... Yeah, and the cassowary yeah. is vicious. It's like a velociraptor. This, so... this wife signed him up to lose weight. Yeah. Now he's in a fight to the death. Yeah. There's a bit of a size difference here we need to be concerned about. A killer whale is 26 feet long, which is much bigger than a polar bear, which... Yeah, they don't even they they you can't even find on the internet. You can't even find people talking about this fight. Yeah, because it's such an obvious. Yeah, it's so one big. One sided. Dude. It's yeah. so big, and it's like the difference of the the cassowary and the whale is the cassowary again is vicious. The other the whether well, humpback whale or whatever just doesn't want to. That's true. It just doesn't eat whatever. Does, killer whale hunts. Fighting. Yeah, he yeah. hunts. This mm -hmm. is what he does. <clears throat> so we're giving it to the killer whale. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. I think, I think we'll go ahead. You, and you don't it. agree. I think we'll go ahead and move that killer whale above that eagle too if we're at, while we're at it. Well, we got to come back. We'll talk about it a little bit. All Let's right. give the eagle the courtesy of at least discussing. It is America's animal. We've got <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's not be disrespectful here. We've got two here. We've got an emu, which no longer has a gun, versus a wolf. Mm -hmm. I got to go wolf. Yeah. I'm gonna go I think wolf. we're going wolf too. I'm still upset the cheetah's not in there, but we'll go with wolf. I will go wolf, but I will say the emu. Bought a switchblade in in the house. <laughs> yeah, and the wolf took some damage. He did take some damage. He but he's oh, damage. so he's he's uh, he's handicapped yeah. going into the he's next. He's got round. some thick skin though. The emus are. We will never invite the emus back. Yeah, to fight again, especially right. now that we've discovered cassowary, which is a similar but better animal. Yeah, <laughs> but then emus, we just said that's enough. We said yeah. no guns, and they and they're like, we didn't bring a gun. You go, you brought a switchblade, which is the illegal knife, right, not yeah. even a regular knife, butterfly right. knife. Butterfly knife is what yeah. he bought. Butterfly knife. And so the wolf took some damage, and the wolf people are furious. And I go, it's already happened. They're not going to be allowed back. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, the wolf is fighting damage now. And now it's going to have to fight the winner of this next fight, which is a moose mm -hmm. and an elephant. Mm. I'm going elephant. Elephants are so much bigger. I think yeah, the same moose is huge, but yeah. Yeah, same kind of fighting yeah. style. The yeah. moose is, uh, could get agile though and like kind of get to the side of it and if it comes to the side with those horns huh 
Like you, like nah. it's like the elephant is like, I, I, can the elephant move that much? I think the head can swing fast, and that good. that Pickles trunk tusk, tusk, and the trunk can wrap you up. Yeah, but I don't think the moose is super agile either. It's not like mm. it can swoop in at you. I'm like, yeah, uh, we're giving this one to the elephant. It's easier. They, they, or these they're getting easier as they, they are. move through the bracket. Because the, all the tough rounds were the first round. Yeah, now we're down. We're down to the uh, elite eight now. Mm. So let's getting serious. So we can jump back. I don't know which one we want to do first. I say we do the cassowary versus a hippopotamus. Which well, you <laughs> I mean, know, I think this one's obvious. You know where I stand here. What's that? I mean, I well, I stand with a hippo. I mean, I do stand with a hippo. Stand with the hippo. I stand with like, a hippo. I too stand with the hippo. Yeah. I'm going hippo too, Nate. I'm sorry. I know cassowary was your your dark horse. But let's hear your argument for the cassowary, though. All right. Uh, I think they all got involved. I think they came out of the stand. Oh, the cassowaries? The cassowaries came out of the stand. Malice in the palace? (laughs) Kind of of a malice in the palace kind of thing. But I don't think we can kick cassowaries out like we have kicked emus out. Emus are bringing... uh, Weapons, illegal yeah. objects, illegal yeah. options, yeah, and they've done it multiple times. So that's why they are officially out of. And there's no competing. evidence that the cassowary asked for the others to get involved. No, it's just so he didn't do anything wrong. They they just knew, like, you know, it's going to be tough. The hippos are just the skin, but they went into it going, at, and they thought he could win. And uh, you know, I think he got his eyes. You know, I say, you know, he jabbed an eye. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think he got an eye. So he's now that hippo's blind in one eye. Wow. Guess where he's the real deal. But yeah. he got he got destroyed. But I mean, he went down. Mm-hmm. And when he went down, I mean, they roared as they got the eye. Uh huh. <laughs> Just a victim of bad seeding, I think. I think yeah. if it were in another place in this tournament, the cassowary yeah. could advance so, a little yeah. further. Well, we think that the cassowary got the eye of the hippo, but yeah. the hippo still wins. I mean, oh, if he's, yeah. oh. he's half blind. I mean, Look, can he even see? He's got his peripherals. He's are probably, half We'll find yeah, out I'm next that, round. You know? the, yeah, the, he's, it's the next round. Oh, okay. I'm saying the Casper does that much damage that he's the next round. Because I'm saying this this round has been beat up because Emu brought that knife after we said no. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the Casper got the eye of the hippo, which is not good for the hippo. Yeah. But the Casper is legit. Okay. And it's yeah, like. Yeah. Kesari is like, I'll die. It's an animal I, we all learned about in this tournament. Yeah. So yeah. we like it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be next year. Next year, Kesari. Uh, next year's a, a, a All right. We're favorite. going hippo. He's We're going, going on. hippo advances to the final four. Over here on the other side, we've got a grizzly bear versus a Komodo dragon. A grizzly bear. I'm going grizzly bear. I think it fights the same way a Komodo dragon yeah. does, and it's just bigger and more powerful. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a real argument for the Komodo dragon here, but just based on the amount of bear talk that goes on on this podcast, there's no way the bear doesn't advance. I think mm. you're probably right about that. Yeah. I'd love to hear your argument. Well, you know, the Komodo dragon is venomous. Mm-hmm. True. So one bite... Uh, will really affect. The, it's too big, but it's like one bite will really affect whatever whatever it bites. Say it's the arm, so now yeah. the the drag the the bear's pretty injured. Mm-hmm. So it might does, be injured in the next round, like like almost all the other animals. I think now. I think it's got to it's got to go in injured. Okay, if it goes to the next round. It's got to the be, grizzly bear advances, but it's, it's down a limb. No, I don't. I don't limping. think. It's, I don't think it's. You don't think damaged. it's even that close. I don't think it. You can't. I don't you can't, damn, not, The grizzly bear can't be. It's not damaged by a komodo dragon. Komodo dragon bit off more than he can chew. I yeah. think. I think it does a lot more damage. I don't than think, think so. I think that's being ridiculous. <laughs> I. And I've had a switchblade and an eye poked out, and I think you're being the most ridiculous. Well, I mean, I hope this doesn't get us a four star review. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but well, we're all going grizzly bear. I think the grizzly, grizzly bear. Advances. I think he's got to be a little injured. I don't though. think he's. I, I, I mean, these guys are definitely beat up. Like they've taken damage. I think like over the course, but I don't think he's taken. He's the least damaged. I think he's lost the use of one of his arms. No, he's That's the least damaged. No, uh, no. I, I'll give you uh, one of his nails fell off. <laughs> you lost a claw. Then. He lost a, one claw. All one right, claw. all right, all right. One claw. Two claws. Two. <laughs> two claws. Let's two do claws. two claws. Two That's claws. A not the same How many feet? does it have total? All right, I'll 16? give him two, two claws. Same feet. Ten. I've On one foot. Yeah. One foot. Two claws. Back two claws. Yeah. Back two claws. I'll get. I'll, yeah. Dude, they have 
You think it's four on each pod? I thought they had only had three, like a Disney cartoon. They only had three have, fingers. It does, yeah. I think I it's know. four. Yeah, I think it's four. And if it's not, we don't. I don't. I don't want to go look it up. And find <laughs> so it's four. Ours has four. Yeah, and it's two on the left. Yeah, okay, on the left, and it's not even a left-handed bear. It's a foot. Yeah, it's a yeah. foot. It's right. It's, but it's, it's offhand. But it's it's annoying. He's not front gonna, paw or back it's paw. He's not going to climb it's trees stings. as well. Yeah. So they they mention it in the. Yeah. It's talked about. The it's part of the report. pre-fight yeah. narrative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it a front paw, though? It's a back paw, we've decided. Yeah. Oh, back, back foot? Paw. Yeah. Oh, if it's going to oh, hurt well, standing up. It's going to hurt standing up. The balance. It's swipe, though. Yeah. The yeah. balance. Okay. Well, well right. either way, it's going to have to take on right. the winner of this just slugfest. A bald eagle <laughs> versus a killer whale. I, I can't weigh in. I mean, I can't say that an eagle could be beat by anything without receiving a bad review. So I'll say the eagle knows it cannot win because it's in the air and it's uh, – it's just a, America's bird, but so what it does is it flies straight into the killer whale's mouth and just does some damage inside. Uh-huh. Like just takes his own, like just goes, you know, sacrifice for the team. Yeah, <clears throat> I think he's sacrificing so the, for the grizzly bear. America's I think bird. He's doing it for ironically, the, is a kamikaze. Pilot. I think well, yeah. but I think he's doing it for the grizzly bear. If the barn owl were still because it's American, because the be grizzly bear story. is American. Now, Dusty has a video of a bald eagle picking up a killer whale. A goat, so. picking up a <laughs> yeah. goat. Oh. Pretty substantial goat. <laughs> yeah. I think the-, the refuse to seek this I think evidence, the eagle but. goes through knowing that the grizzly bear, it's like, hey, you know, grizzly bear and eagles are see each other a lot. Yeah, yeah, And they're like- Classic Americana. Yeah. Yeah. And they talked a, before this fight. They talked before this fight. And the grizzly bear goes, look, you're not getting advanced. And the eagle goes, I know. I know. But I'm going to- Make a sacrifice, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna go in hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just goes in and just tears the inside. It gets pretty deep in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just rips apart. Oof. Does some yeah. damage. Okay, so we've got our yeah. we got one more fight to get into the final four. I mm-hmm. think this is a quick one too. We've got an elephant versus a severely damaged wolf because yeah. it, got just, yeah. it got hit with a switchblade. Got hit with a switchblade. It's got to go elephant. Man. It's, it's elephant. It's got internal and bleeding. Yeah, I mean, it's not good. The wolf family. We are. We apologize to the wolf family. Yeah, we upgraded their seats. The the wolf really. They're kinda, still howling. The wolf. They're still. Yeah, they're in the top. They're howling. The wolf <laughs> shut up about yeah. it. The wolf limped out there. It's got a. It's got a. You know, its arm in a thing, and it's barely can walk, and it's. Yeah. And they're like, oh. <laughs> and then we all just cheer the wolf. Yeah. Everybody just kind of, it's an award ceremony. Mm-hmm. We go, well done, wolf. It's not fair. And the elephant just, it bows and says, I'm sorry. And then just <laughs> stomps it. Yeah. And, then, and it's over. It's it's, a, <laughs> yeah. it's done very, as, as honorable as it can be done. Right. right. It's the most honor we've had. Yeah. And it kind of brings into the final four to be like some respect that's been shown. Sure, sure. To go like, all right, these animals are now. We got the riffraff out of the way. Yeah, it's been chaotic. Now it's we're down chaotic. to the, the four, four juggernauts here. Yeah, four blue chips. All right, hold on, because I forgot we got one more ad sponsor. Yeah. Well, if you're looking, if you're in a fight, you're looking for some recovery. Uh, Athletic Greens is Very the way to go. You know what I mean? Because thanks to our partner, Athletic Greens, it's all what, of us. It's not what it is. It's not a recovery drink. Well, well, if your vitamins but it are down. helps you. Okay. Your vitamins if your would be vitamins down. down. If your vitamins are down, you've been hurt. You need vitamins. Okay. You've been heal. bit by who knows what. Yeah. Animals That's all over this country. For sure. Yeah. 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 So all of us here are trying to take our AG1 by Athletic Greens every day. We gave a, we all gave AG1 a try because we wanted increased energy and immune system support for our busy lifestyles and potential fights. We all try to take AG1 in the morning before starting the day, and it makes us feel like we're doing something good to cover all our nutritional bases. It is much easier to mix one scoop of powder in water once a day than to take a bunch of different things. It is the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute and costs less than $3 a day. Since we travel so often, we also get single-serving travel packs, so we never have to miss a day when we're on the road. You can get a free monthly delivery and make it even easier. Every scoop has 75 vitamins, minerals, people don't talk about minerals enough, (laughs) and whole food sourced ingredients of the highest quality that have major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. Less than one gram of naturally occurring sugar per serving. AG1 has been part of millions of mornings since 2010. If you are looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Nate. 
That's athleticgreens.com slash Nate. Check it out. Oh, boom. All uh, right, so all these animals minerals. have taken their EG1 to get ready for the final ready. fight. Final so four. So this is the final four. Are we missing something at the bottom? No, oh, no. it's okay. all. Okay. That's where the winner it's goes. Final down four. To this, all right. Man. So elephant and hippo. That's probably a decent fight. One-eyed hippo. That's a very though. good one. One-eyed, one-eyed hippo. hippo. Remember the, the elephant's hippo good. Does have one eye. Elephant has been un basically hasn't been hit. And it's already beat a rhino yeah. too. So yeah. yeah. It did beat a rhino. Somebody sent me a video on Instagram last night of an elephant and a rhino fighting. And just the size difference was so much. It was just, it wasn't even close. The elephant's elephant's that much, so much bigger than a oh, rhino. Really? And I had no idea it was that much bigger. Oh, wow. So it, I think it's basically untouched up until this point. Yeah. And so and it just kind of beats the hippo. Taking on a, a damage, is a half blind hippo. Mm-hmm. A half blind hippo. But I think the hippo gets some, I mean, I think it it has to get some big bites in. There there are some highlights of this fight. There's some sure. highlights of this fight because the hippo is just so strong. Nothing to lose. I mean, hippos can go land and water. So if there's still water there, mm-hmm. you could lure that elephant in. That's true. It could. Probably b- better in but the water too. Yeah, I think the hippo, but it is. It only has one eye, so it's got to you know it's kind of the the elephant's kind of making it go to its left, mm-hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> And I, I mean, I, I do think the hippo get, does get some giant. But like, I think it's a good fight. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a fight that's like, uh, it was like almost like uh, when Floyd Mayweather fought Conor McGregor, where you're like, it was fun enough, and then Floyd just ended it. Like you know, because it's like he's just as a boxer, he was just yeah more skilled as a boxer. But the beginning was very fun. You're like, whoa, yeah. you get to watch some stuff. You know, Floyd took some hits, and yeah. you're like. You know, obviously Connor's a fighter, so yeah. it was like amazing. It's like that kind of fight where it's like, oh wow, like that was actually pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And the hippo was like, you know, someone's like, I think the hippo could win at another time. And you're like, I don't mm-hmm. know, dude, they're just so much bigger. But I have not been mauled by a pack of cassowaries. It right. doesn't. The eye right. thing hurt it, but yeah. even with the eye thing, you're like, because everybody's like, but the eye, when you're like, I don't know if you even want to see this fight again. Like, uh, yeah. I, mean, I think you do. I think you want to see it, but it's yeah, that eyes, yeah. that's just tough. Yeah, those hippo that eyes was tough. Are, right. See, it's got eyes that on was the sad side. To see that. So it's got no frontal view, yeah. I don't think. And, it's, and people are like, I wish I would have seen them with two eyes. And you go, Look, I hear you, but so. I still don't think it yeah. I just don't think it really matters. Mm-hmm. Nah. But I, I wish that yes, I do wish we'd have had two eyes, but you know, the elephant got some I mean the hippo got some big bites in there. I mean, you know, got a leg that was like this the most damaged elephant. The elephant it's the most damage it's seen. Mm-hmm. It's the first time there's, it's really been close, yeah. I think. Yeah. This, yeah, this yeah, went yeah. 15 rounds for sure, yeah. but I think the elephant takes yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But a hippo, hippo's an early favorite for next year, I think. Yeah. Which All starts right. next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fight Land podcast. <laughs> We've got a grizzly bear, which, let's recap, it got... Oh, I think we agreed it it's missing two had, claws. Had a, it's yeah. missing two claws on its back yeah. foot. So not that, not damage that damage. Two versus, inch, uh, yeah, it's been ripped apart. Versus a killer whale. That the eagle, the eagle, the, blew the killer it up bear from the inside blew it up from the inside. The eagle <laughs> and the grizzly there, bear have been kind of teamed up. It's yeah, and so that's why it's the grizzly bear. I mean, yeah. obviously this is a hay bear podcast, so it's I I tend to favor bears and. Uh, it's, you know, but I think the eagle just like, you know, the grizzly, it did not get let down. And I think the eagles and grizzly bear now in the wild live differently together. Yeah. I think there's a mutual respect and that relationship is pretty special. You might even area. see them on a lot of shirts together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you when you see an eagle and a bear in the wild, you just know that they know. Like, that there's some country music playing in yeah. the background. <laughs> there's, a, there's some there's some true love between them. Yeah, yeah. mutual respect. Yeah. You hear yeah. Chris Stapleton in the background. There you That's go. That's what I hear. So now you got a grizzly bear and an elephant fight. And I mean, you look up as this as they as this this has probably been talked about. I mean, well, the side sure. difference is going to be Does the killer whale do anything to the bear though? Is it getting hurt no, at all? I don't think so. I think that I think it's uh I think the grizzly bear just comes in and makes some big swipes. Like the the killer whale is like kind of out of it and kind of tries to do like one of those boat ramp things and maybe goes a little bit too far and he can't really get back and mm. and it's just he gets it. Uh, elephant strength, elephant speed, bear, 
IQ, <laughs> elephant, bite force, elephant. Well, elephant got stronger. Grizzly bite? bear. That's weird. Tusk. This is a terrible uh, video I picked. I'm sorry. Uh, well, it's like giving it's, just, it's going quick though. I think the elephant winner seven oh. Uh, yeah, I don't it, know it quickly elephant. went through the. It, it was like the grizzly yeah. bear versus the elephant is just the elephant is like. Is there another little thing? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate they picked maybe the oldest elephant I've ever <laughs> seen. I mean, this thing, this thing's. I like think I could beat that elephant. Yeah. yeah, shows how long that thing's lived. It's just gonna be Good a grizzly point. bear. It's like I want it to be the grizzly bear. I'll be honest. I want to. Uh, I don't think I don't think anything beats the elephant. And I'm getting tired out of. Uh, Making up stuff. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you, you said a few weeks ago a gun might come back into the picture, but I guess that was the switch oh, play. That was the switch play. I think. Look at that rhino and elephant. This is the video. Even with a gun, me. it's got to so be crazy. It's got to be it's quite so a gun. much bigger. Yeah. And a grizzly bear is just not even uh, close. I don't even think the rhino wants to fight here. It's like just no, let me and my baby get, get away. away. Yeah, dude. yeah. I think maybe it was talking, talking some smack. Yeah. yeah. And then the elephant got going. Yeah, I mean, is a grizzly bear as big as a, a small rhino? Nah, I wouldn't think so. What's a is it even small? Is it smaller than a small rhino? Well, it's probably what's a grizzly bigger than that yeah. baby rhino. Can you look at a grizzly bear so size? Rhinos weigh between thirteen hundred and two thousand pounds. Yeah, and a grizzly bear is gonna weigh uh, six hundred pounds, four to six hundred pounds. So it's smaller than a rhino. And what does an elephant weigh? Probably weigh and ele- I mean thousands, yeah, yeah, multiple tons. An elephant weight is going to be, I mean, four, <laughs> four thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, four thousand pounds. But it says it can't. Uh, Asian elephants can weigh up to eight thousand eight hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. That's four tons. The largest ever is fifteen thousand four hundred pounds. I think it's Asian American elephants. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I think the elephant the elephant wins. And then this is ending with we've had uh Roll not tide. as much thunder. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Your Alabama. Oh, that's a good spin. Yeah. Your, your your thing did Hay Bear did make it far, wow. and we were proud of Hay Bear. Elephant is just so big. I love that this thing has a the silhouette is a lion, which we had put out in the first round mm-hmm. by an emu with yet a- another <laughs> national championship under its belt. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Elephant. Elephants are. I like elephants. I mean, it's crazy. If stuff would have got through, I don't think anything's beating the elephant. I guess with the size, it is the biggest thing. Well, the humpback whale is the biggest, but it's the blue whale, it's the biggest the land blue animal, whale, biggest land animal. Yeah, most active. I mean, I think the the sea animals are. It's they got to get them in there, and it's that's that's hard. It's tough for sure. And they got to they got to do a little more coming out and be like you know. I think they said the kill world got the polar bear in. Whoever created this bracket for us really did a lot. Mm-hmm. They did really. They a lot, really. Yeah. They really. They had no idea it would turn into. This. It was really a fun ride. You it was know, a, fun a lot ride. of surprises, a lot of ups and downs, yeah. mm. a lot of corruption. I mean, this was like this is like the World Cup. Yeah, I don't know that Nate will be invited back next year as commissioner. <laughs> I mean, his stuff got out of. I let <laughs> stuff get out of hand. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Ratings were ratings were through. through. Yeah, you might be back because the ratings. Yeah, yeah the ratings yeah. were good. Yeah. And maybe I allowed some of it. I'd yeah. like to see the hippo uh, tarantula fight. What a video! <laughs> <laughs> what a video comes out, uh, and you're you taking see, money under the table. You see me uh, give a switchblade to the emu. <laughs> maybe a video comes out. Oh there. yeah, there is. maybe there was something. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe it was your the brother were uh, down. Trevor. Your maybe brother Trevor. Trevor slipped it to him. Acting yeah. career struggling. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe Trevor did it. All right. All right. Uh, we finished that for you guys. I'm sure uh, some uh, adults are happy that it's <laughs> over, and I'm sure kids are sad it's over. I Don't worry. Kids... Next week we'll start comedian fights. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like uh, that. I, what is this, this week? I'm in Vegas. I'm in Vegas this Ooh. week, and then uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, so, yeah, come on out if you're in Vegas. Fun time. June 18th, I'm at Zany's Comedy Club in Chicago. Whoa. Please mm. come. Father's Day. I keep saying that. Oh, nice. Bring your, bring your dad or your husband. Yeah. yeah. Nice. July 7th and 8th, I'm in Bristol, Tennessee at the Blue Ridge Comedy Club. Come on out. 
Well, you know, I'm still off for now. I'm waiting on a baby to come. But in the meantime, I got a lot of great YouTube videos. If you just mm. want to go on there and go to my YouTube channel and just watch some of those yeah. videos. He could be working if you wanted to. Yeah, it could be working, but I'm waiting on a baby, baby. to come. Yeah. And in July, once July comes back, it's ramping up. Yeah. I mean, the second half of the year is yeah. popping off. No one think he, he's sleeping. You're yeah, not no. quitting, no, he's quitting No, I've been gardening and, yeah. uh, you know, I got, I'm getting into it out here. I'm, yeah. I mean, by the time July rolls around, I'll be having some tomatoes and cucumbers in here for you guys to eat. Ooh, and, oh, nice. Uh, I don't know. like either one, but I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Laura loves tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be excited about yeah, that. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah, so it's going to be great. All right. Well, we love you. Uh, hope you have a great week and we will see you next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast. <laughs>